Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another stream with Swaggle Haas. I am so excited to be hosting the stream here tonight because we got a super, super awesome show lined up for everybody out there. Uh, we have some incredible guests. This is very exciting. Uh, so I will definitely bring them on in a second. But before I do that, we got to do a little bit of housekeeping. Of course, I got to say what's up to people. I got to also point out my awesome new neon sign that I got right up there from Mrs. Swag for Christmas. So you guys got to let me know if you think that the sign looks good. Do you like the placement? I was very disappointed because I put out this video uh, earlier today that like had my sign in it and nobody commented on it. I felt, you know, kind of hurt by that. I was excited about it, but hey, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, so let's go into the chat right here and just kind of say what's up to some of the people as, you know, we kind of filter in, kind of let people show up to the stream and kind of say what's up. So big John, Big Daddy Ross, what's going on? What is happening? We are waiting on the show and I have to get up at 4.30 to see if I need to shut down the plant. Yay. Looking forward to get this together. Well, you know, thank you, John, so much for hanging out with us. Uh, you know, I don't know how long we're going to go tonight. I prepared a bunch of stuff to talk about, but, you know, we got a bunch of really big brains on the stream here tonight. So we might be, you know, chopping it up quite a bit. Uh, Tim, what's going on, man? Medals handed out here, asking for a friend. Medals hand handed out. I don't have any medals handed out, but I can give you a thumbs up. Uh, we got the Pressable Defects in the house. What up, Pressable Defects? Well, we have one of the members of Pressable Defects here tonight, Matt Forge. Uh, so very, very excited to have him on. Uh, but definitely, if you're in the chat right now and you don't know uh, all of our special guests that are going to be on. Uh, I have links to all of their YouTubes in the description. So please take some time to go into the description, click the link. You know, you guys can open up another tab, hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cause you guys like any trouble. Doesn't take any time, but it means a lot to all of the people who, you know, work on these videos and try to bring you guys this content. So definitely please do that if you can. And also, I guess I got to say, you know, if you could just smash that like button. If not for me, smash it for all the other guests that are on here tonight. Uh, Empire Comics is in the house. What's up? What's up, Empire? Uh, definitely also go check out, you know, some of the other YouTubers who are in the chat right now, like Empire. Go check out uh, his YouTube. Go sub him up. He makes great videos as well. Comic Forge, other principal defect member. Definitely Comic Forge is in the house. Uh, what do we got here? Any thoughts on if we will be doing giveaways? Giveaways, uh, not tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of the comic book market stuff, but, uh, you know, I'm going to have giveaway stuff soon. Uh, let's see what else, what else? All right. Uh, hey, we got Newbie in the in the house. Newbie's in the chat. So uh, we got to say what's up to him. And we have Automatic Comics. What's going on? Oh, my God. These guys are in the chat right now. A lot of people watching this stuff. They will be very, very excited to see each other very soon in the stream, I'm sure. Uh, Joe, what's going on? Really looking forward to you tonight. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Rush, what's going on? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Fallen Hero, what's going on? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Jeffrey, Ronnie, we got a lot of great people in the house here. We got a lot of great uh, people showing up. Uh, Jamie, what's going on? We got Bloop Comics, what's going on? Uh, so good to see everybody here. Nowhere Bound, hey, what's, go what's going on, man? Good to see you. Uh, who's, let's see who else here. We got Black Crown Comics here. What's going on, man? Good to see you there. Johnny, uh, what's going on? You got some market opinions? Well, yeah, definitely. We're going to be talking about the market. So definitely in the chat as we are discussing topics, we might do some, you know, uh, questions from the chat later on in the show, but we'll, we'll kind of see where we're at, uh, depending on like how long we go. Uh, but you know, definitely comments along if you, uh, have thoughts as well on stuff. Uh, wet dreams. Cheers, man. Uh, Zach, what's going on? What's going on? And comic criminal, what is going on? All right. Well, you know, I think I've kind of rambled for enough time here. And since we got a lot to talk about, you know, I, I definitely want to bring on the guests of our show because I have the honor of being joined by these amazing comic book YouTubers. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, did Swaggle Haas spend way too much time making a ridiculously cringy meme intro to bring on his guests? And the answer to that question is obviously I did. So without further ado, let us bring on the guests for tonight's show. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable comic book YouTubers to see if they could become something more. So when we needed them, 
they could discuss the market. Like we never could. And with that, we have our wow. amazing lineup of Matt Forge from the Principal Defects. We got Newbie from Newbie's Comics. We got Drew from Como Comics. We got Ryan from Automatic Comics. And not certainly, but not last but not least, we got Rob from Neo's Comics and Cards. Now, I know what you're wondering. I know you guys are thinking two things. You're thinking, one, why did you guys have this be the Illuminati thing, but you did the Avengers intro? Well, obviously, they haven't made an Illuminati movie yet, so that intro felt fitting come after me. I don't know what to tell you. And then the other thing you're wondering is why did newbies graphic kiss? On yeah. Yeah. Comics? yeah. When, yeah. We when we you were know, looking into my eyes, yeah, you know, yeah. Know, I didn't started, know it was going to be so romantic. I was animating the thing. I just wanted it to be there, but the logo just kept moving. I oh no yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I, 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 so I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for joining here today and, you know, let's kind of get right into it. Cause obviously we got to, do our intros. We got a lot of great stuff to talk about. Uh, but you know, I thought I'd pull up the slides so that we can do the intros, but maybe I should highlight you guys. I don't know, but let's work our way around the table just so that everybody uh, who may not be familiar with you guys uh, that's in the chat can get to know you. So uh, Rob, why don't you start us off here? Uh, Neo cards and comics. Sure. Uh, primarily come from the sports card side of things. That's what a bulk of my content is. However, uh, when the pandemic first started, I dove back into my, uh, you know, younger days of collecting comics uh, and picked up some really good investment books called X-Men Number 1, Jim Lee, and CGC 98. So those were my first graded books that I bought. Nice. Um, but as the year went on uh, and as the collectible markets exploded, I dove in a little bit harder uh, and then kind of went a little deeper into comic books towards the tail end of 2020, early 2021. And then also kind of work that into my general content and I've been doing that for about a year now, give or take. Right on. Well, in the spirit of the Illuminati, I mean, I think the idea is to have voices from all the different, you know, cosmic street, like uh, multidimensional, everything like that. So I think you're going to bring a very important perspective as someone who can speak to the card market. Uh, especially when we start to like dabble in some of these talk of topics like CGC and 9.8s and things like that. Uh, all right, moving around the table. Como, uh, why don't you say hello to the people and introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Drew. I'm the owner of Como Comic Books. I run a channel here on YouTube. Surprise, surprise. Um, just happy to be here. Uh, we had a lot of great introductions. I've watched a lot of videos from some of these guys, so I'm excited to be able to share a little roundtable with them. Um, I focus primarily on back issue comics. I don't really get into new releases. I kind of stopped reading new comics a while ago. So if it's old and Marvel, I'm definitely going to talk about it. If it's old and something else, I can still probably talk about it. But uh, just looking forward for the to the conversation. Right on, right on. All right. What about Matt from The Principal Defects? Well, first, Mickey, I just want to say that sign behind you is the tits. All right. Thank that you. is Thank where it's you. at. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad somebody right. likes it. I wanted to be the first one to comment on it. I all right. I was that. hoping I'd be the first. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, I think we all kind of forget that the comic book community is is larger than the kind of our little circles and sects that we have. And, and it's nice to be sharing it with some different corners of the community. You know, we all have some overlap, but you you know, we tend to gravitate towards the people that we more overlap with. So it's nice to to start pulling in different perspectives and and people don't you, you don't normally get to see on a uh, daily basis. So it's nice to share the screen with some of these guys. I've definitely watched their content. I know newbie already, so that's you know whatever he's newbie. But uh, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm excited to be here. This is going to be a lot of fun. So yeah. uh, let's get this started. Uh, all right. Well, speaking of newbie, why don't you uh, introduce yourself now? Next. First of all, I think it's more more questioning on why Ryan was at my window looking outside <laughs> and was raining and I was sleeping. I think I think that's the more important question. Okay, what's going on, man? Swag. Thanks for having me here. I was hoping it would get to me first, but yeah, I love that sign. I've actually got a Corona one down in my man cave downstairs. Uh, love them. So Miss Swag. Did a good job. Uh, and yeah, you know, just to touch on what Matt said, uh, it's great having different people from different areas. And uh, 
you know, just dabbling, talking comics. And uh, I'm interested, man. Let's uh, let's get it going. All right. And last but not least here, Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself as well? Yeah. Uh, Ryan with Automatic Comics. Uh, yeah, it's just it's fun to be here. Love talking about this stuff with people. I, I talk with, you know, newbie almost daily, I think about you know, just something, you know, usually he's talking about Iron Man or, you know, something like that. But, uh, but, but yeah, yeah. Happy to be here. And uh, for me, yeah, it's, it's a lot of the older books that tends to be where I, uh, I focus a lot of my attention. So that's, that's generally where I can, I can speak to the most. Right on, right on. All right. Well, let's kind of, you know, kind of get into it. Cause there's definitely a lot of topics that I want to hit and pick your guys' brains, but first we got to ask a question, you know, what is this, you know, why are we here? Of course, if you didn't get it from the intro, I think the idea for me was to sort of just bring together a bunch of brilliant comic book YouTubers. Uh, and this is something I would love to be able to do, kind of like what Matt was getting at, which just like more often, you know, kind of just get other perspectives from the community. You know, it doesn't even have to be on my channel. You know, we could be on somebody else's channel. It doesn't have to be, I don't even have to be in it. I would just want to watch it. So like, I just have, you know, I would love to have more of these types of things. So we'll kind of get into the bunch of topics and speaking of topics, you know, here's sort of the things we're going to talk about today. Uh, so if you're uh, maybe watching the VOD, I will do you the courtesy of putting in some timestamps. So may that might be helpful if you watch the rewind. But we're going to talk about, you know, the collecting rewind of 2021. We're all collectors. So we got to talk a little bit about what we've been picking up. Uh, we got to talk about the Disney Plus effect, which, of course, was, you know, the big story, I think, to start the year. I want to talk about the 9.8 craze, which seems to be going on. Uh, I want to talk about some of the record sales and maybe some dabble in some market manipulation if we think that there might be that. Uh, then we got to talk a little bit about the correction that came. We got to talk about the flipping game. Uh, we got to talk about, of course, what's going to come in 2022, which includes, you know, CGC increasing their prices, uh, maybe other buying markets like whatnot and things like that. Uh, and then we have, you know, Moon Knight coming up. So I feel like that might be a good show to sort of talk about like where we see the market, at least starting in that place. And then if you've seen some of my other streams before, I've, I usually play this game called Spec Collect Forget. We're going to do a slightly modified version uh, with all of us here. And then at the end, we'll kind of leave it with, you know, just our general thoughts going into 2022. So makes sense. Sound good? Let's do it. Yep. All right. Let's well, go. Go. all right. Well, you know, of course, 2021. What a year. What a year for comic books. Now we're in 2022. Uh, but before, you know, we kind of really dig into the topics, I just kind of want to ask you guys, I mean, Rob was actually kind of getting at this a little bit and talking about some of the books he, he picked up. Uh, but let's look to, you know, start with Matt here. Like, you know, did you did you find yourself buying a lot of stuff this year, even with the prices going up? Do you find yourself selling? Like what what was your, you know, collecting like for this cr crazy year? So 2021, it definitely was a little slower for me than 2020, uh, just because, you know, personal life stuff kind of takes the front seat. Um, but I definitely was able to, uh, I didn't collect as many big books. Uh, the one big book that I spent money on was Adam Blue Marvel. Um, nice. You know, I bought some, you know, $50, $100 books, but that was the only big, uh, big book I bought all year. I did, you know, some selling, you know, um, definitely some spec flips things like that. Uh, I was able to do, you know, I, I mainly focused on low dollar books that I thought would, you know, increase, you know, buy it for two bucks, sell it for 20, 30, 40. Um, and then I just did some, you know, some run fills, you know, I'm a, I, I, I like collecting uh, Silver Age Submariner. So I was trying to fill out my one through 21 run. So I spent a little time doing, doing that at the beginning of the year. And then towards the middle of the year, when things got crazy, I kind of just sat back and watched because right, right. it was just, I knew things weren't right. And a lot of people were saying, it's going to keep going, keep going. And clearly I, I don't know. I, I'm sure some of us, you know, got, a, you know, we kind of got caught up in the craze for at least a, a you know, a quick second, but uh, you know, it, obviously it, it definitely took a little bit of a downturn. I don't want to jump too far ahead because I saw you yeah. had the topic there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, I tried to pick my spot in 2021. Uh, I wish, you know, I slowed down probably like November, 2020. Um, I wish I kind of slowed down a little bit later because if I, if I would have kept collecting for those three or four months, it would have been, a lot better. Um, yeah, be a rich you know, man. Because March is when things really went nuts. You know, I, I gave a lot of good advice. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a yeah. lot of people say, well, "Would you buy this or would you buy that?" And I wish I bought them instead of just telling them. You know, here's here's maybe where you want to look. But uh, it was a good year, though. I, I feel like I had a pretty good year. No, you know, no, not not too many big regrets. And I did some some personal collecting and some small dollar uh, 
flips, which right. which worked out pretty good for me. So right. Well, what about you, newbie? I mean, did you kind of get caught up as well in the surge of things? Did you FOMO into any books that popped off this year? Like, what was your kind of twenty twenty one collection? No, you know, I actually um. I actually got lucky. Um, so two of my the biggest books that I got uh, was Giant Size X Men One and Hulk One Eighty One. But I got them in uh, like late January, early February. So that was like before, right before they yeah. just kind of took off, right? Mm -hmm. So like I was, you know, if I were to sell them now, it's still, you know, at a profit and fine. But um, yeah, I just you know it, sometimes, uh, and Ryan and Matt have heard me say this, but like you know sometimes a book just presents itself to you and you you kind of have to take it um outside of that you know i mean i i kind of listen to my own spec and i kind of listen to you know mr matt up there with some specs so you know we kind of bounce ideas off one another and uh you know it's like he said right you buy you know two three dollar books and you're flipping them for 40 bucks you do that you know a few times over and you know you can get a book uh and that's kind of how i've been kind of doing 2021 so um yeah but like Matt said, right. I mean, around, uh, October, November this year, I kind of just was taken back at like some of the stuff that was selling for like no reason, <laughs> you right, know what I mean? Right. Like, it's like, Oh, this character's popping. So like, let's get the 19th appearance of it. It's like, why, why is the 19th appearance of a D list character selling for a thousand dollars? You know what I mean? Like just things like that. So yeah, I just kind of took a step back and, uh, you know, just regroup and, and see where the market is. Cause you know, it, it's all trends and you know, with how the world is depending on what side you're on and what state or, you know, province with the pandemic and stuff. So I just kind of took a step back November, December and uh, yeah, looking forward to a better 2022, but yeah, I can't complain in the books yeah. I got this year, man. I, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. You definitely got some, some big ones and we're definitely going to talk about those sort of like a D list tier books uh, eventually, but, uh, let's check in with Rob here. And Rob, you mentioned, you know, in the little intro, you were just talking about how you start to really kind of pick up some of the big X-Men books and things like that. Would you, would you say that your interest into collecting was because everybody was talking about comic books in 2021? Like, was that a part of you kind of looking this way or what was your general thought of like, or just like kind of, Hey, I just always wanted to get the stuff and this year is as good as any. So, like I mentioned in the intro, I collected as a kid. I collected um, comics more than cards. But first, uh, I was born in 81. The first comic book I ever bought off the rack was Jim Lee X-Men 1, Uncanny X-Men 281, and 282. So I am a child of that right. that era of comic books that I collected for quite a while in school and then came in and out of it like most of us do as you, you know, discover that girls exist and stuff like that. Yep. And then really fell off the map. I mean, I still have my original collection from when I was a kid. It's beat the hell. Um, and then, you know, the pandemic rolled around. And as most of us did, we turned to collectibles as a thing. I, I first jumped back in the sports cards hardcore in 2018, 2019. Then when the pandemic kicked up, I started looking at, I started reading Marvel Unlimited again. And I was like, man, I really want some nice CGC books just to put on display. And of course, I went back to the stuff that I collected when I was a kid, bought some stuff, took most of the back half of 2020 off, and then into the fall and winter, and then into the beginning of 2021, the sports card market continued to go absolutely crazy, and prices were continuing to escalate, and people were looking, constantly looking for the next thing to jump on. And that went from, you know, different eras of sports cards, then it jumped into Marvel cards in December 2020 and into January, 2021, and then continuing actually through to today. And at that point, I jumped back into comic books again. I started looking at some stuff and I was like, you know, I think as hot as the comic book market has been, I think it's actually poised to go next level. So I, from January and into early February, I was buying as much as I basically possibly could um, nothing crazy, but like, you know, like thousand dollar ish books, like a, you know, new mutants, 98 edge of spider verse two, like that sort of stuff. And then that market exploded, uh, in the spring, right. When the sports card market exploded in January and February, it went ultra crazy. Right. And I view comic books, you know, um, newbie was talking about, you know, buying a $2 book and selling it for, for 20, 40, 50. That's sports cards to me. So sports cards to me are my, I'm buying for 50 selling for a hundred. I viewed the comic book market as more long-term investment style. So I'm not buying 
um, you know, the hot variant book of the week. I'm sticking mostly to key blue chip books, you know, Hulk 181, Giant Size X-Men 1, Fantastic 452. And I'm buying those as long-term holds. I'm essentially buying those to park money. I'm not in a hurry to sell that stuff. And I bought in January, part of February. And then I saw what the comic book market did. It went sky high, just like the sports card market did. But at the time the comic book market peaked, sports cards were on their way back down again. And I said, okay, this market's now at a tie. Let me pause for a while. And then I took most of the spring and summer off. And then I recently started buying pretty heavy again um, into the fall, into the beginning of the winter. That's I just picked up my Hulk 181 and Giant Size X-Men number one about a month or two ago um, and have been continuing to buy. But I took the peak off. I, I missed the peak in sports cards by buying comic books. And then I flipped back. Comic books nice. peaked. I stopped buying comic books and went back to sports cards. And uh, that's kind of where I sit right now. But I view all the comic books I buy are more... I'm buying these to collect slash hold long term. I'm not buying something necessarily as spec and looking to flip it in two months when the next trailer drops. Right, right. So more like a store of value type of thing. Uh, yeah. On the sports card side, a lot of people will do that with vintage cards. You know, they'll go buy yeah. vintage baseball, basketball, football. I don't like vintage sports cards. I would, if I'm going to buy something vintage, I would rather have a Hulk 181 because it looks really cool sitting behind you. You know, yeah. on, on your on your display. For sure. For sure. Oh, well, what, let's move on to Ryan here. And Ryan, what what what, what were you kind of looking at? I mean, I know you you get a lot of DC stuff. I know you you're into the Golden Age stuff as well. You know, was it? Did you feel like you had to kind of navigate those these crazy waters this last year in buying that stuff? Like, was that stuff as <clears throat> crazy as you know the spec stuff that related to the MCU? Like, what was your sense and how did you navigate buying this year? Well, so for me with with comics, I'm literally always buying like week after week and that's why if you watch my channel like i'm doing unboxings like constantly because i'm I, i'm i'm always looking for books and my uh what i like to do is i like to look for books that i think uh are, are being sold at the moment at uh below market and then so that i have an immediate kind of like say like buffer with the book that's the way right. i like to look at it so that even if say things drop some, I still have some protection in that book. And so I'm not buying it right at, at that market price. I don't, I don't like to buy at, at market. Um, but what I noticed throughout the last, uh, throughout the last year was that, and, and I talked my, my brother buys and sells comics too. And so I talked to him about this, uh, quite a bit. And, uh, what I noticed was that it wasn't every book that was going up at the same time. So yeah, we, you had a lot of stuff that was hot in kind of like April, May, but if you kind of like look at a lot of books, it's kind of like the peak moved across where you went all you went from like April through about August and you had different books peaking at different times. And so what I that's one of the things I, I talked about a lot on my channel. And what I noticed is that you could you could see that a book hadn't moved yet. And you you could just it's like you could see the future. You knew it was going to because everything else did. And they all that's like what AF15 is doing right now. You know, right. AF15 didn't move with everything else earlier this year. And it now, you know, it's been doing that that crazy peak thing. And you've noticed it hasn't really gone up anymore. It's been kind of leveling off and even dropping a bit. It did its crazy peak and it was just delayed from everything else. And it was the same thing with like Fantastic 450. You know, Fantastic 448 and 49 moved earlier in the year. And then 50 popped about two months later. And it was just like everything kind of cycling across the year. So I found that I could always find books uh, throughout this year that I could buy because as long as you were aware of what books were at that peak and just trying to avoid, avoid those. But I, I did something, I bought my uh, upgrade giant size X-Men one recently as well, because I noticed those had come down significantly. I thought that was a good time to, to, to upgrade my copy. Cause that had, that was one of the uh, X-Men was one of the first like, series of books that really peaked this year. And yeah. so they were the first ones to drop. And so that's why we've seen X-Men drop. Uh, quite a bit quite a ways back like kind of like june and they've been going lower and lower all year and they're just finally it seems starting to kind of like level off and maybe turn up a little bit and right. so it was for me it was really watching that but the uh golden age golden age has been uh crazy for the golden age normally golden age is like flat for you know, for, for right. like like a decade you could have the exact same price on a book and over the last year or two years i mean hundreds of percent increase in a lot of these books, especially with within certain genres like pre-code horror 
crazy, <laughs> you know, mm. uh, big name superheroes like action comics, detective comics, Batman, those kinds of things. Crazy. But then you've got other books like uh, like Captain Marvel, like the Wiz comics, you know, that kind of stuff. Those are still pretty flat. You know, there's just there's not as much uh, demand for that for that genre or, or that specific character. So it's very targeted when you're when you're getting into to Golden Age, because Golden Age, I mean, I, mean, I know the modern quote modern is, is a huge period. Golden Age is a pretty huge period as well. And there's just there's tons of books out there. And a lot of them, even if they're old, even if they're in good condition, they don't carry a lot of value. And so you do really have to know what you're looking at when you're uh, when you're starting to deal with the Golden Age, because there's a lot of filler out right. there that that just I mean, it might it might even if it's a cool cover, that doesn't always mean <laughs> that it uh, it carries value. Somebody having paid a price for that book really uh, drives value. You, you'll see that with things like Matt Baker romance covers, where it's like the instant somebody spends like two grand on that book. Now that book is two grand. But which is yeah. also you had mentioned, you know, something earlier about manipulation. I feel that that's one concern I would have with mm. Golden Age is I feel like that's an area where because there's so few uh, copies of a lot of these things, that's a place that it's, you could have that happening. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I, I, I do, we'll, we'll definitely circle back to that when we get into that, you know, manipulation thing. And, and we'll talk about the, you know, the small sample sizes and how that affects like how, you know, hot or cold a comic book really is. Um, so it is really interesting to think about that because you don't have any point of data, right. To know how much right. the, val the value of a book is until someone actually decides to buy it. And then, there's the floodgates. And, and um, that's the other thing with Golden Age. You do really have to, like, uh, with more modern books, pricing is pretty straightforward. You know, you can go to Go Collect or GPA or Cover Price or whatever, and there's tons of sales. They're all, you know, kind of around some certain value. But with Golden Age, uh, it becomes more of an art. <laughs> you're kind yeah, of like yeah. guessing off of other grades and you're like, ah, this many dollars per grade point, you know, that kind of stuff. And you just, you're, you're kind of winging it <laughs> a little yeah. bit there. But, uh, but I don't know, it makes it makes it fun. Yeah. Well, Drew, let's finish out with you here. You were kind of nodding okay. along with some of the Golden Age stuff. Did you did you find oh, yourself yeah. buying some Golden Age books this year? What, what, what did you? Find? Um, I didn't really get any Golden Age. Uh, just to go off what Ryan was saying, it's brutal out there. He mentioned Matt Baker, LB Cole covers, Schomburg covers, you name it. All those guys um, are just nuts. I'm a big EC guy, and I'm really regretting not picking up some of the. Uh, the EC horror stuff that I hadn't picked up previously because I mean, if it's in one piece, it's hundreds of dollars at this point. Not that it was ever particularly cheap. It's just worse now. Um, really 2021 for me was the year of the weird stuff. So I happened into uh, a bone one and like a small early run of bone. Um, I did a video on that just blew me away it's a book i kind of just had written off i didn't think i'd get and that happened early in the year and that kind of just set the stage for what i spent a good chunk of the rest of the year doing i was just going and buying weird early 90s early mid uh early to mid 90s books that were always in the wizard top 10 or hot 10 or whatever it was when i was a kid i remember you know seeing as i was reading wizard i'm just like yeah i'm you know, they're not worth a lot, most of them. But uh, just last week, I picked up like a milk and cheese one. I picked up like she one, just weird stuff like that. Um, so that was fun for me personally. I picked up a Spider-Man slab here or there. I think I got a 9.2 ASM 149 just because growing up when I did, um, you know, the Clone Saga was the big event right as i started reading spider-man mm -hmm. so i've always had a soft spot for the jackal um and the clone saga so i was very happy to pick up one of those and then on like the business side i picked up some really nice collections uh last year which was great i also put a lot of uh, money into a couple of different just like major blue chips like bronze age blue chips um that are on the horizon yet i mean everybody's questing after these books just because of what they are but um and specifically i can just say what they are it's marvel spotlight 5 and tomb of dracula uh 10 i bought a 80 spotlight 5 and a 75 uh, tod 10 just to sit on basically um i got them at a good price the market came down we're starting to shift back up um on those two books and there's still a lot of road between 
now and when I expect to really want to sell those books until we get a ghostwriter uh, announcement or, you know, something official in a, a trailer. Once we get closer right. to the blade project, then I'll be more motivated um, to move those. But all in all, it was a weird year, but I was really happy with some of the, uh, the things I was able to pick up. I don't know. It's yeah. uh, it's, it's all right. <laughs> well, we're definitely going to talk about that ghostwriter thing in a second later yeah. on today. But before I move on to the next topic, I got to shout out John Big Daddy Ross with the $20. $20. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Maybe I can buy that. What is it called? The uh, God of Hammer book now. Uh, <laughs> some, of my favorite, some of my favorite content creators. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you, John. I really appreciate that super chat. All right. Well, so, you know, we talked about our 2021. What do we collect and things like that? But we got to talk about, you know, kind of the big things. And a lot of you guys were even getting at it uh, as far as like some of the stories of 2021. When that, of course, was, you know, the Disney Plus effect. You know, we had, I think what it started off with, which, you know, kind of started with Mandalorian. And maybe, you know, as Rob was saying, like maybe it's some of the card people just kind of also jumping over. But for whatever reason, it felt like because of Disney Plus, you know, that's when the market really, really took off. Uh, you know, I started to see it with Disney Plus, then WandaVision was crazy. And then I feel like when we got, you know, the Agatha Harkness all along, like that was when, at least for me, that to me felt like that's the floodgates that's now burst open. And one of the things I think is really interesting about that specifically is, you know, there were rumors that um, actress name who I totally forget uh, was playing Agatha Harkness. But it was at that specific moment that it was like, oh, those rumors are actually true. And now any place where there was smoke with speculation, like people felt like there was going to be fire and everybody started like, like that. this is like set the, in my opinion, set off like the, oh, I'm going to spec on the show that's three years out right now because they're talking about, you know, such and such book coming out or whatever. And so to me, that felt like it kind of blew open the floodgates. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of pull up a bunch of books right here that, you know, these are all ones that are Ugh. connected to the, let's say, Loki, Falcon, Winter Soldier, WandaVision, you know, that time when we were really, really popping off everywhere. And I kind of want to just ask you guys, like, what, what was your take on when we got the Agatha Harkness reveal? And even when you look at some of these books, like, do you have any opinions on them right now? I'll, I'll kind of open it up to the floor who anyone who wants to sort of pick out a book otherwise i'm gonna assign those you stuff. damn those damn speculators look at what you've done <laughs> jesus <laughs> man i don't know i don't know what, what do you think man i mean listen i yeah go ahead no well i was just gonna say you know it's it's uncharted territory uh i mean at least it was when when uh wandavision kicked it off right um because you know before covid right uh people forget um even like younger people who are coming into the hobby you know, like they think that this is just how it's always been, but it's not. I mean, we've all we've used to, we used to have like three to four movies a year. And then if yeah. you wanted to see the sequel, it was like two years out. Right. Like and, and right. people forget that now we have, you know, four or five movies a year plus like, you know, four or five shows. There's a lot to do with it. But, um, you know, what I'm finding is, you know, a show comes out and, you know, I'm not like it's it's a bad thing. I love it. I love the spec stuff. But. You know, we we spec so far out and, uh, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But like what I'm seeing here is a lot of dollar books. Like the one that pisses me off the most is that West Coast Avengers. It was like a twenty dollar book. And then and you it know. still sells for a lot. That yeah. one has retained. Yeah. Yep. But he shows up. He shows up. And, and the, the biggest slap to the face is in a nine eight that passed New Mutants 98. And people were like, yeah, man, that's how it should be. I'm like, are you out of your mind? But <laughs> yeah. hey, you know, it is what it is. Right. I, I think, you know, newbie hit it on the head as far as, you know, we're in uncharted territories because, you know, we didn't have, a, a, you know, I will just stick with the MCU. We didn't have an MCU, you know, project for how long because of COVID. Mm. So I think it was a perfect storm, it, probably in a bad way. Right. You know, we had a lot mm -hmm. of pent up, you know, everybody's like, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? A lot of dates getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. And then all of a sudden, like WandaVision, you know, I'll start with WandaVision that came along and everybody's speculating. What's the bigger story here? What's the bigger picture? What's the next thing going to be? Um, and it just and I think that along with the infusion of outside investors coming in with new money, it was just all it just all happened at the same time. And it created 
uncertainty for you know you know collectors and, and i'll even say speculators because i think almost everybody that collects comics is a speculator in some way shape or form because whether you're speculating because you're going to flip or whether you're just speculating because you say well is this the right time to buy it because i want it for my pc is it is it too high too low um but i mean it 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 created a little doubt in my mind too, because even with the Agatha stuff, you know, I, you know, swag, you said it was a rumor. I mean, I think everybody on this panel kind of knew that that was like, yeah. you were 99.9% .9 sure that that was Agatha Harkness even before the show started. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we're, we're grabbing those books and like, all right, well, you know, if you grab that book, like eight months before the show started, you probably paid, you know, somewhere between five and $20 for it. And if you pay, and if you bought it, like, a couple of weeks before the show started, you probably paid somewhere between 20 and $40 for it. And then you stop buying them because you're like, all right, how much more can this book really go up? And then all of a sudden we saw the Agatha, we yeah. saw the Agatha <laughs> effect because all of a sudden we're like, holy shit. And I think some people, myself included, you kind of start to question yourself and say, well, is this going to happen with all of these books now? Yeah. And I think <clears throat> another thing like, and, and going off of what newbie said is, we also didn't account for the fact that we're used to only having maybe three projects a year where if a project comes out, the focus is on that project for an extended period of time. So you're not, your attention's not all over the place. So now I'm focused on WandaVision books before, during, and, and months after. Now it's like one project ends and you're already looking at that next project. So if you didn't sell the books, if you're talking, if we're talking about flipping, if you didn't sell those books in that window, those books are all already on the way back down, you know, nine out of 10 times because people's attention is somewhere else. So with all these projects, we have we have attention scattered all over the, the collecting spectrum as far as which character, which appearance, which cover appearance, that it is having the, the wave effect of these books drop a lot faster than we're, we were used to prior to WandaVision. Right. So I think we have to all make that adjustment for number one, until, you know, COVID gets to a place where, you know, people are actually going to the movies at a, at a normal pace again. And two, you know, where, you know, the properties kind of, we start to get used to the fact that you're going to get, you know, six, seven properties a year. So, yeah. right. Right. Matt, you know, you know, the, the, the biggest thing too, with like, you know, speaking about the unchartedness is the fact that these shows also have a way of, you know, let, let, let's be real. I mean, with how, you know, the post office works too. And, you know, I, I'm up in Canada, but, you know, if I'm watching a show and I know this episode, you know, uh, Dupe shows up. Oh my God, Dupe shows up. He's going to be in this. That's great. You know, and then Dupe gets hot. And by the time that book gets to me, Dupe could be killed in the next episode. And then that's it. Right. So like right. You, you see books <laughs> just go boom and then they could easily go down in a week. And we've never seen that. Right. Because when movies would come out, we would, like Matt said, we would have the focus on this for like pretty much four months until the next project came out. Everybody was still trying to figure out every little piece of information in that movie. Now it's like, you literally have like five to six days until like the next week comes. And that book that was hot, that episode could be worthless the next one right yeah. so exactly. one, one thing i saw that was really interesting was how how you got with each show people started buying earlier though so like yeah with uh with wandavision it was like week of that things were happening even mm -hmm. even big books like x-men 4 you know that book it's like it, it wasn't popping until late into that show and then yeah. with the uh, next one was uh, falcon and winter soldier mm -hmm. i remember even two weeks out from that show i i bought a like a cap 117 for like a hundred bucks, you, you know, like, I, I mean, it was, you, you still had something like that, but then with Loki journey into mystery 85 spiked like two months out. It's like people all of a sudden were like, you need to buy these Catch books. On. Everybody got into the kept happening earlier and earlier. And, and it was, it got tough. It is tough. I think now to get ahead of, of these projects, you really do have to look out a little ways. Yeah. I want to pull Rob in here and Rob, I, I don't know if you have any like particular feelings on, on these books, but I wanted to ask you about the West coast Avengers, uh, white vision book, like 9.8s were of that book were selling at prices that were like beating out a lot of his like original first appearance, you know, the 2,800 Canadian for a nine, eight. Yeah. So could you, is there any precedent in like sports cards where like 
LeBron James's like 2022 card is outselling like his rookie card? Like, could you imagine a scenario like that? Like, I mean, or do you have any thoughts in general about some of these books? So there's not a direct comparison like what you just said, but what you do see on the sports card side is a guy. So say a player that's been in the league for or literally <clears throat> just drafted when their cards first come out will sell for more than um, players that have won multiple championships and all time greats. Like that right. happens all the time. We're more excited about the potential of a character coming than a character that's actually in a show. Correct. And also what you usually see in sports cards is once the season actually starts, the prices drop because it's all about perception drives the prices. Then reality sets in and it pulls the prices back mm. is what, what you usually see. So prices will spike in the off season. They'll run up to the start of the season. The season starts. No one reaches the lofty expectations that the market put on them before the season started. And then you see prices pull back. And also similar to this, people then move on to the next thing. It's like, oh, okay, well, we're in the middle of basketball season, but football season's coming. Let's go buy some of that stuff. Right, right. So, that sounds so that would be really the, similar to comic books in that sense then. For sure. And the one thing, like, I don't have necessarily any specific comments about the books on the screen, but the books on the screen in general, this concept of the, the new Disney Plus world that we live in is one of the reasons why I'm excited about parking money in this market because Disney Plus is an entity that Disney needs to drive the company. That's the future of the company is Disney Plus. Right. And there is constantly going to be either a Marvel show or a Star Wars show basically yep. on Disney Plus, probably 365 with very little gaps in between. Yeah. There might be little, you know, we might go on like right now we're getting ready to kind of start the Star Wars run. We're going to take a little time out from Marvel. But that still obviously drives the comic book market. As soon as we get done with this little section of Star Wars, we're going to loop back around and then all the Marvel stuff's going to start up again. And yeah. that is going to be 24-7, 365, basically, until maybe one day people get sick of it. But I just don't know. I don't think that happens until we at least get through X-Men stuff. Yeah. But that's why I always say, too, it's like the, I feel like gone are the days of like Mickey Rourke whiplash just being like killed at the end of the movie Great and movie. it's like all right Great cool movie. there we go you know it's like i feel like every character is gonna if they die they're gonna like die off screen or they're gonna get the kingpin death you know like oh they were shot off camera or whatever well, like was, imagine you know? what his first appearance would have actually been worth if that would have been now that that movie came out but that right. book, that book mm -hmm. never got to anything you know it no, just no. like it, it shows it you the difference and how people have reacted to characters from when iron man 2 came out versus now Right, right. Uh, Drew, let me pull you in on this one. Uh, as far as these books are concerned, do, are there any books that you see right here that are still like good buys in your opinion? I mean, are you you uh, stacking a bunch of uh, Flag Smasher books still? Like, what's your thoughts? On, well, on I'm going to flip it on you because I'm going to talk about the book that is not here that we haven't talked about. I can't believe it made okay, it all the way okay. to me and nobody talks about it. Silver Surfer 3. Oh, yes. The book oh, Mephisto. That, yeah. That, well, that look. It blew up, but it never happened. And here's yeah. the thing that book, it's down across practically every grade. But you look at it now, even with those dropping prices, it's still two to three X what it was selling for in 2020. So we had the steady drip across multiple MCU shows or Disney Plus shows, and everybody's. You know, is this little portrait on the wall? Is that Mephisto? Is this guy Mephisto? And then none of it ever panned out. But this book blows all of these books out of the water money-wise. But like Mephisto's coming. And it never happened. Like he's is still he? coming. Though. As much as anybody yeah, is. Yeah, he's right? gonna be I thought he was yeah. Spider-Man. I, I don't know. Yeah. I thought he was Spider-Man. Yeah. That's, that's one reason why. Like, like, exactly. Sure. Um, yeah, but, you say, know. That's, uh, that's one reason why on my channel I talk about you don't need to necessarily spec on books that are unknown like this, you can see huge gains in major keys. Right. I mean, yeah. even like, like journey into mystery 85, that book oh, yeah. like went up five X <laughs> over the course of like two months. Yeah. And I mean, you can, and same thing with, with uh, silver surfer three, I mean, just huge jumps in some major keys. Right. Well, let's be honest. Journey into mystery has been one of those silver age Marvel titles that has historically been undervalued. I've got yeah. a mm -hmm. couple JIM 85s. I don't think I paid more than a couple hundred bucks for either, any of them. I'll give you 200 for one. I bet you would. <laughs> Double your money. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, X-Men's the same way. We're seeing these huge increases in prices. X-Men number one was so, like, 
not cared about. I paid more for my 5.5 five X-Men 50 to finish my X-Men run this fall than I did my X-Men 1 for right. perspective. So we're now finally playing 10, 15 years of value catch up across some of these books. Now, everything on the screen here, if you bought these out of a dollar bin and you rode the wave up for all these shows, you're still happy because despite the fact they've come down, they're still 20, 25, 50 bucks, yep. you know, yeah. you're still happy. I'm still happy because I went shopping in my own discount bins and pulled most of this crap out of here and I got it in the hands of people who wanted it. So I'm yeah. still pretty stoked about that. But yeah. I think the main thing that I'm taking away from Disney plus just the steroids that it's pumped into the market is it's kind of forced everybody to look at things differently. It's, it's helped a lot of books that were out of sight, out of mind, um, not given any attention by collectors for years and years. It's given them an opportunity to have their moment in the spotlight to kind of catch up with, um, you know, Spider-Man one through a hundred uh, with some of the bigger Iron Man books, you know, just the things that have steadily increased over the the last 10, 15 years. Right. So th that's what I'm excited about with it. Drew, it's, it's funny that you right. say out of sight, out of mind, because I always try to talk about that, how mm -hmm. I think one thing that all, you know, with all this stuff happening, you know, with all these shows and all these movies that we're getting now mm -hmm. is perfect example, you know, Moon Knight, uh, She-Hulk, they're confirmed. Mm -hmm. Their yep. actors are already there. Oh, we're going to get there. We're going to get yeah. there. We're we, gonna get there. <laughs> we get them, but like, it, it's just uh -huh. like people forget, man. And like yeah. some yeah. books, like, you, you run to them and then it's like, uh, and then people just yeah. sell, yeah. Is, you know. So, the, the, one, the one thing I'll say though, is we are all susceptible to FOMO. Yeah. And, oh. and, and being converted. Mm -hmm. Cause I saw Spider-Man three and I never cared to own ASM 14. But after I you was watching Green Goblin, I was like, yo, this, this dude, Willem Dafoe fucking sick. I need <clears> this <throat> fuck. And that's how I yes, felt. Yes, you do. You know, that's how I felt. So, like, we're all susceptible to that being converted uh, into the fan yeah. after the hype. One thing I want to say about this slide real quick before we get ready to move off of it. This is something to take from the sports card side of things. Like, these quick moving, you know, quick flip books. One thing I've learned on the sports card side, which is a market that moves even faster than this mm -hmm. does. I mean, the sports card prices will jump you know, in a week to a day wow. sometimes. Per um, game, almost. Yeah, per game sometimes. It's, it's calmed down a little bit from that, but at its peak it was. Stuff like this, if you're if you're buying it to flip it, don't be afraid to just take the profit. Don't get cute and get stuck holding longer than you're mm -hmm. supposed to, especially on stuff like this. There's some nice books up there. Don't get me wrong. I would not classify any of those as a blue chip key. No. Sell it on the no. way up. Even if you don't try to time the peak, you do not. There's only one sale that happens at the top of that graph. Odds are you're not going to be it, but you're better off to sell while it's on the way up than on its while it's on the way down. Because mm, once panic point. sets in, everyone starts undercutting each other. Yep. And the other thing I'll say, which is a, is a phrase that a lot of my people that watch my channel have, have taken the heart is, especially things on this list. There is people seem to get stuck in their head that there's this magical rule. There is no law that says that you can't buy this stuff back. You know, no. you, you, right. you buy it for 10, you sell it for 50 on the way up swing. Maybe it goes to 75, maybe it goes to 100. Who cares? You made your 40. And then when it comes back down again, like we all know this stuff's going to do, buy it back again for 20. Because odds are it's not going to probably go all the way back down to the previous price. It'll level off at whatever the new floor is. But you bought for 10, you sold for 50, you bought it back again for 26 months later. Everything on this list and most stuff in general, unless it's ultra, ultra rare, yeah. they allow you to buy it back. They yeah. let you do, they literally let you buy the stuff back. <laughs> There's no law. You know, the comic police, the card police don't kick in your door and say, oh, you bought that last year. You're not allowed to buy it again. Yeah. Yeah. I think people well, forget that. Well, very well said, because that's going to help us transition into the next thing of, of you know, t getting some of the, our hands on these books. But I, I kind of want to pick your guys' brain a little bit on this stuff. Uh, as we can see at the top here, I got running back by committee. Now, if you have played fantasy football, you know about this term, right? Running back by committee. That's when you have like two running backs, especially it's the worst. If you have a red zone specialist, you know, the guy who's going to poach all the touchdowns away from your star running back. Uh, and I kind of feel like maybe the analogy here is like when you have these first appearances of the character and then you have the first appearance of the version of the character. So like, 
you know, uh, Amazing Spider-Man's annual 16. That was the first appearance of um, Monica Rambeau. She was in WandaVision. And then this Young Avengers number one is the first appearance of her as Spectrum. Let's assume that she does become Spectrum. You got the prices right there, like Matt. Like, what do you? Well, why don't you? Why don't you start us off here? Like, what are you thinking? Like, what? What's the one that I should buy if I like that character? What's the winner well, book? It's funny because we the last video we did kind of before we took a break from recorded videos was uh, Cold Keys talking about buying uh, Mighty Avengers one because the last sale at that time, which is about a month ago, it was just above a hundred bucks, and oh, nice. I I have a feeling like after that video, like uh, about. 10 CGC 98 sold. <laughs> so now the <laughs> you price is at about 180. You, you um, yeah. <laughs> but this is a tough one. I, I guess it depends what you want it for. I mean, since we're talking about, you know, spe speculating and investing, I see a couple people in the chat getting a little upset because we're only talking about speculating and investing. But what'd you expect when you came in here? So, <laughs> I mean, obviously we're all collectors here, <laughs> but this is what we're, we're talking talk about. We're going to talk about other stuff. We'll, we'll talk to right. other stuff. We'll get there. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I think I'm pretty certain that she's going to be spectrum and if they say spectrum that book will see a nice spike but it's going to be really quick so if you don't have that and, and you're looking to get a profit if you're not ready to sell that thing right away you may be upset with you know how fast it comes down so uh it's i think the sure thing is the asm book here but it, um maybe from 180 i could see it hitting 350 quickly again you know maybe one or two sales at that so that one comes down to timing it's going to be a little bit harder to do that whereas the asm annual i don't think you'll see as much of a spike but def definitely just a steady gain and a and a solid you know just plateau where it where it hangs out and depending on how important of a character she becomes and i think she could be around for a while that it could just see a steady gain so i i don't think you can go wrong on either one to be honest with you um Bigger like, risk, I think, is the Mighty Avengers one, though, because you're going to see a quicker spike and fall on that. For, yeah. for sure. Newbie, I've heard you say before, and I, I tend to agree with you, that like people want to own the version of the character that they see on the screen. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like that with this book? Like, Let's say we get the Marvels next year. They're calling her Spectrum. She's wearing that costume. Does this book become more expensive than ASM 16 annual? Well, 16? I think I think with this one and maybe it's, you know, and and guys, correct me. Please correct me. But, you know, I think it's different when you run into Amazing Spider-Man because, like, you know, it mm. is just iconic. I mean, it, whoever your character is, Spider-Man is number one, right? So everybody wants to collect Spider-Man, um, you know, so that that's the thing. But, you know, like to Matt's point, um, I, I believe the character is going to be around for a while. There's going to be, you know, people paying crazy amounts of dollars for both of them, Uh <laughs> It's down right now. So, I mean, you you have an opportunity to get both. I've got a few copies of the Mighty Avengers 1, uh, two of which are coming back 9-8s from CGC. So, I'm hoping they go up. Um, it, it's tough, man. Uh, because, you know, Swag, like you just said, I, I like the character when they become what I see and what we know them for. Nobody is buying... Shoot, what's a good, good example? Um... Help me out here, guys. <laughs> you know, of, like of situations like this. You know, yeah, situations. you know, like nobody, well, like nobody buys ASM eighteen. They buy ASM two thirty eight. Perfect. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking like way worse uh, yeah. ones, like Patrick Mulligan. But yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, I personally want the character when they become the character. So right, that's just me. Um, you know, better cover. I've always liked the Mighty Avengers. Um, that Spider Man one. I mean, even though it's Spider Man. I've just never really been a care like a fan of this cover, yeah. um, you know. So yeah. And let's Fair be enough. honest, there's a bit of a stigma associated with annuals a lot of time. You know, I mean, yeah. really, Avengers Annual Ten, ASM yeah. Annual One, really the only annuals that stick out up until recently. You know, JIM Annual One's taken off, but for the most part, you find your run of the mill annual in a discount box most right. of the time. Yeah. Well, let me let me do this. I mean, uh, I don't know, Ryan or, or Rob, I don't know if you have a particular feeling on this book. I have other examples that are like this All that right. I might throw to you unless you want to talk on this. I, I mean, my general opinion is I I go for the I go for the original. And uh, and for me, it's be, and especially in a case like this, it's because, yeah, you might see a bigger percent increase on the short term with Mighty Avengers. But longer term, the other one is going to at least 
protect your your investment more. And so right. that, that's one thing that I like to look at when I'm when I'm buying books is I I don't want to have boxes and boxes of stuff that that I can't sell. You know, I, I want to have books that that have that inherent demand built into them that are easier right. to move regardless of spec, you know, that kind of thing. And if it has spec to it, that's just a, that's just a bonus. I'll be interesting to hear what you say if you feel the same way two slides from now, but let's go on to the next one. So fair to say that you're going with 117 in Definitely. this in this situation. <laughs> what about yeah. anybody else here? What what do you guys think about this comparable? You got a 3.0 for 117. I'm always going to go with the OG, but I, I, I tend to sh shy away from ultra modern as much as possible. Right. So I'm well, always going to lean towards. I'm with Rob. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely, I, the most modern book that I own, I think, is Ultimate Fallout 4. You, right. you got to pick you, one, you gave that's two, bad. Yeah, you gave two examples where, it, you know, it doesn't happen that often. It, start, it seems like it's starting to happen more now, where the first appearance is, is a Silver Age or a Bronze Age book, and then we talk about a character they become in the modern. So, like, it's almost an unfair fight. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, some of these other books, it become, you know, they become the character in the next issue or 10 right. issues later or in the next comic series, which is still in the same era. So that's, those are almost never. I think it's 99% of the time. Right, right. The, the time they become the character when it's in the same era is always the more expensive book. Yeah. But with yeah. these... It's it's gonna tend to go with the more you know the 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 older book just because it's more blue chipish if that well, is a phrase we could well, use. <laughs> well, let, let me let me put it let me put it this way. I have three hundred dollars in my pocket. I love Falcon, and I want to invest in him and make money. Which book is giving me the better return? If I go with the three point oh, or am I going with the nine point eight? What would you guess? How long of an investment period? Well, yeah, yeah and, exactly. and, and this is one of I'm those gonna things. Sell it, I'm going like, to sell it after Captain America four. I'll just put it at that, or or let's say at Captain America four, I'm going to sell it. So I think you're probably going to get comparable returns because yeah. that that, mm. that book, if you look at that one, it's come down significantly. I think it was up around like six fifty. That that nine eight, uh, it, it's yep. it's tanked late, recently, and I I actually think it's like for me, I think that's actually not a bad book to buy if you're looking for that that near term you know, kind of like return, but you, like, uh, uh, was mentioned earlier, you have to be ready to sell it when it, when it gets to that point, if you don't, you're stuck with it again at $300, three years from now. Yeah. Yeah. And if it, to that point, if you're going to be stuck with one of these, I would much rather be stuck with 117. For sure. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, well let's, it's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. I, I, I I'm, a, I'm on board with these guys. I, I think, I don't think there's a clear winner here, but I definitely right. rather be stuck with the 117. Yeah. I think part of it too would 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 depend on census data as well. You know how many one seventeens are even slabbed total versus nine eighths of the Captain America, right? The more right, modern, very one, true. You know, yeah, because that could affect how much the return you're going to get on it, right? Popular right, well, supply, you know, the old supply versus demand. That that's been one of the really tricky things with the with the uh, you know the market or if you want to call it recently has been that once a book goes gets hot, there may have not been very many graded at that moment, but. Yeah. Six yeah. months from now, there's a ton of them because everybody mm -hmm. tried to send them in, you know, to get graded in that time period. And so now it really changes the picture of what's available. Yeah. You yeah. got everybody right, well, coming to the market late after the price has already dropped off. There's this influx of new inventory. I mean, it's kind of a worst case scenario. Right. Right. Well, let me say, because Matt, you, you were talking about, you know, the, the, you know, silver age versus modern. And yeah, you're right. Like most of the times it feels like the older book is better, but there is one example I got. And what about this one right here? Ooh. You know, you got your first John Walker and now it seems like he's US agent. Now the US agent book kind of hard because the 9.8s, I think the black cover are really rare. So the numbers don't quite even, but if you're someone who wants this book, are you, are you a John Walker fan? Or are you a US agent fan? Like what's your thoughts on this one? Is there I mean, just I, John Walker fans that aren't also? The, right. <laughs> right, right. I think the, I think these books are too close for that comparison, though. You know, these right, these right, are right. you know a year apart or less. You know, I don't know less than that, right? So I I, I think this one you you're definitely like. I mean, the market's telling you which one it is here, right? For yeah. sure. And the black cover is definitely helping its cause. So. Also, I think if you're a, if you're a John Walker fan, you probably have a lot of these because they were literally like a quarter. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and if you're seeing these prices for the first time, I, I would suggest selling a few because, yeah, um, yeah, it's just crazy. That, I mean, that the US... all these books were nothing. Like I, you would pass them oh, up yeah. all the time, man, and it's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, the US Asian cover, I think, is is what's driving that price. I mean, obviously, it's first appearance of US Asia, but it's a much better cover. He's on the cover in it costume. Yeah. It's a yeah. way cooler looking cover. It's a yeah. tougher grade. Yeah. Like, and, and let's be honest, despite their collectability, the 25th anniversary covers aren't that great most no. of them in my opinion and just tangentially i had these books side by side on a wall at a show right as falcon the winter shoulder was taken off i showed the uh the u.s agent one twice as often as i did the uh, right. john yeah. walker first appearance so that that's the book everybody seemed to be drawn to at that moment okay well, i think it's good to get a little bit of consensus, you know, it, it, amongst you guys to hear what you guys think about this. Uh, similar to this sort of situation, you know, uh, Ryan, you were talking about going with the older book. Like this is kind of looking forward now, right? These are books that this, the same thing's going to happen with these eventually. Yeah. So uh, starting with you kind of Ryan, like l thinking about those TTA books, you know, with it, but it's, but it's Scott Lang versus Hank Pym, you know, what, what kind of, what's your thoughts on, on these ones? Well, I mean, so I, I think with uh, with the old the older one with Tales to Astonish 27 versus 35, 27 is always going to be the bigger book. I mean, 35 has gone up quite a bit lately. It has actually yeah. gotten uh, the, the popular. I I had a I had a big sale recently of a of a six zero. You know, I mean, they've they've gotten they've gotten more expensive, but they're still nowhere near uh, 27. With the other one, it's the the cover really dry, the the. Um, uh, Marvel premiere, which one is that? 47. Uh, uh, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, mm -hmm. That one, I believe it sells for quite a bit more than the Avengers uh, because it, that cover yeah. is just, is a much better uh, representation of that character. I, I think people are drawn to that a lot more. Right. Um, so, so then it's tricky when you get down to that bottom row. Cause that, that captain Marvel or the Marvel superheroes 13, that is a tough, tough book as grades get higher. I mean, you get above a 9.0 and they are almost non-existent. And so it gets extremely expensive as you get to higher grades. Uh, so it, it all depends, you know, what you're, what you're looking for there. But I, I mean, I generally in, in, uh, well, I'd say for the first one, I prefer the, the older one, but I do like the cover for this for 35 better, uh, for the one on the bottom, I prefer the, the oldest copy just cause I like that silver age square bound book. And I think it's cool if you can get it into in a nice grade. But I don't. I mean, I don't have a problem with the the Bronze Age, you know, Miss Marvel. I probably wouldn't be buying the uh, the modern. And then, but the uh, uh, but Marvel Premiere Forty Seven, I'd take that over uh, Avengers. What is it? Is it One Eighty One? Is that what that is? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, it's One Eighty One. And I just looked up your uh, price on your six O. Congrats, man. That's awesome. Yeah, that was, that was a, that a was sale. A sale. <laughs> yeah, that's congrats. But I I want to echo everything ryan just said um 27 is always going to be the money book just because it's tough it, and it's one of those that it's pre-hero but it's not since hank Pym kind of becomes a hero um and the colors along the spine uh, being those dark silver age colors that book exists primarily in one condition and that's beat to hell um they're just yeah. always extremely worn tons of color breaks lots of color rubs um and again, as as he mentioned, TOS or TTA 35 rather has really come on uh, lately, which is nice because it's another one of those Silver Age books that just wasn't getting love for the longest time. And and I love the cover as well. There's a lot of really great Ant Man covers in those first five or six issues. Uh, it's in all costume. the runs that that don't have the character's name in the title. It, mm -hmm. It's yeah, you know, it's yeah. Tales of Suspense, Tales to Astonish, Journey into Mystery. You know, they just. They, and they it, really it's, get beat down compared to the other titles. Yeah. And especially when they have that original trade dress, like, because they'll update, you know, the, <clears> the <throat> font for Tales of Suspense and Tales to Astonish Strange Tales a few issues after the superheroes catch on. Um, I've always found that those earliest ones with the original trade dress really kind of pop more and i'm kind of glad to see that they're they're getting a little love these days for me it's like the old detective comics and action comics i love the the, the, the block you know type the original uh, lettering and everything that, that yeah. they have at the top i think it just it looks awesome that's why i really like those early ones agreed yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, would, about, I, I wish we got, uh, maybe we could get some, to some stuff that we disagree on. Cause that's probably going to make for a better show, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've all been on the same page pretty much here. Uh, well, I think the tales to Assange 10 cent versus 12 cent always has a big deal. Yeah. Uh, people, you know, especially older collectors. Um, but that, you know, getting back, we all kind of touched on it, but that Marvel premiere 47, that is just an undervalued book. Usually it has its moments where people remember like, Oh shit, this is probably a book I should own. Yeah. Uh, so it has, it gets its little spike and then it comes back down. So with that book, there's al almost always money to be made on that book if you buy it at the right time. Um, because I think we could all agree that this next Ant-Man movie that's coming out, it looks like it's going to be pretty important. It's probably going to do pretty well at the box office. Uh, we got a huge first appearance. Looks like it's coming in there, the official first appearance maybe with Kang. Um, so that's a book that you could definitely make some money on if you get it that at the right price in the next six months. That book has found its way, you know, from me selling it and rebuying it on the dip, maybe like three or four times yeah, in I'm like you, three, four yeah. years. Like it's crazy. Right. right. Well, maybe we can disagree on on this super chat that we got here from Steven. Uh, I have a high dollar collection of modern 1990s to today, 9.8 keys. As a guy who enjoys money, am I an idiot for not selling it all and just buying the nice X-Men 1 or FF5 I can afford? Well, Steven, thank you so much for, for the... Uh, the 10 bucks, man. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to do the political answer and I'm going to say like, well, you know, you got to buy what you like, or, you know, if you like your 9.8 moderns, I mean, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. Like that's like, whatever you want to collect is what you should collect. But I don't know if anyone out there, if you guys has a, a feeling on, on Steven's predicament, right? Dep here. It depends if there's a book out there, you know, that you could trade that, that collection for, and you want a book. I mean, I know mm -hmm. I've done it. I, in the last like three weeks, I've gotten rid of maybe two long boxes just because I'm I'm trying to go after you know Tales Spence thirty nine. That's that's my grail. So <clears throat> that, that's just kind of what I'm doing. So it, I guess it just depends on what you're doing and what you want, right? Um, if there's books in there that you like, you know, keep them. But yeah, like the political answer, right? You always want to be left with books you you want than anything, right? Like behind me, I don't have a problem with any of the books behind me, right? And some people they they can't say the same. They they just buy based on whatever. So yeah, I mean, I I buy for a lot of reasons. I I don't own, me personally. I don't only buy books that that I personally like. And I think that's something that mm -hmm. if you are into buying and selling things like comics or or cards or whatever, you need to understand other aspects of that that market. You can still like I, I'm always buying keys, but I'm not always buying keys that I personally want to collect. Mm -hmm. Like I I buy uh, some like old golden age disney books every once in a while because i know that that's a very strong market i i think they're cool i, I recognize them as keys but they're not necessarily something i personally want to keep and so it, it really does depend what you personally want want to hold on to and if you have a whole bunch of books that are in, in nine eight and you you're you want to get into one of those those other those other big keys i mean it's really you have to kind of look at timing you know i wouldn't necessarily say yes yeah, sell all those nine eights right now because some of them might be you know, near a high, some of them might be at a low, you know, if, if you want to, and same thing with X-Men one or fantastic Four one, like right now is probably a pretty good time to buy X-Men one. It is not a good time to buy fantastic four. Number one, <laughs> you know, X-Men one is down quite a bit. Fantastic four. Number one is at its peak basically. And right. so that's the kind of thing For you now. need to really consider when you're looking <laughs> right. at these books. Right. Right. Well, let me do this. Let's, you know, because Stephen brought up 9.8. Then let's kind of move on to the, the next topic. And I got to kick this one off with Rob here because I feel like you can speak well to a lot of these books. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think you have all of these books in 9.8. Maybe not ASM 300. I'm not sure. I don't have an, I don't own an ASM 300. And my ultimate Fallout 4 is the second print, not the first print. But oh, I do have a New Mutants 98. Okay. Well, we got to talk about the 9.8 craze because I feel like. It's interesting to me, you know, a lot of the times I feel like in my videos and my comments and stuff, I got a lot of people who, you know, might be more the old school collectors who kind of, they kind of poo poo. I think a lot of the books like New Mutants 98 or ASM 300, and they kind of are like, oh, these things are printed into the millions or whatever the actual print count is. And they say that these things are going to crash or whatever. Uh, but they don't acknowledge the fact that these three characters on the screen are like the three most popular characters, like. <clears throat> in the last created in the last, like, you know, I don't know, 25, 30 years. Right. So what's your thought on, cause I know you got the new mutants book. What's your kind of thoughts on the 9.8s that craze, like sort of buying at the top and, 
maybe you can talk about like the pop count because I've heard you talk about like pop counts and and not fearing what the, they are in the comic book market. Yeah, and New Mutants ninety eight is a perfect one because that's the one that that was the first. I don't know if you want to call it a blue chip or whatever, it, it, more investment key book that I bought. I bought it early January. I think I paid like twelve hundred bucks for mine, eleven hundred bucks, whatever it was. Uh, not at the. I bought it before the peak, but still bought it at a, at a higher price than normal. Yeah. And that was back. You know that January period, January February March period was when you were seeing a lot on like the Facebook group, social media, like oh my god, what are these prices doing? Like you said. And my, I always went back to New Mutants 98, and it was a focus of, of a lot of my videos because, to your point, a lot of people on the comic book side say, oh, my God, this is a super high census book. You're crazy. What are you doing? And I'm looking at it as an outsider. You know, I'm the one coming in that I understand comic books. You know, I collected comic books growing up. I know the characters. I don't necessarily understand the ins and outs of the market back then. I understand it a little better now. But I viewed that as an outsider and said, okay, if I'm a fan of Deadpool, and I want his first appearance, and I'm coming in from the investment slash collector, whatever you want to call it side, and I want it in a 9.8, because a lot of the sports card guy side of things is we want PSA 10s, we want whatever the highest and the best grade is, and the best slab, et cetera, et cetera. There's whatever that is, like there's like 3,600 in a 9.8 or something like that on the CGC census. On the sports card side of things, so if you want a New Mutants 98, you want a first appearance of Deadpool in a 9.8, that's what's out there. There's 3,000 and some, maybe it gets up to 4,000, maybe it gets up to 5,000. On the sports card side of things, if I want a Luka rookie, Luka Doncic rookie, star, young player for the Mavericks, he's in his fourth year, there are so many different options. You have 10 different brands, um, millions of parallels, think variant covers, if you're not familiar with sports cards. There's tens of thousands of his rookie card in PSA 10. So when I look at that and I see what those prices go for and supply and demand matter, there's much, you know, there's a lot more people. The sports card market is bigger than the comic book market. When you look over on your guys' side of things and I see 3,600 in a CGC 9.8 of the first appearance of Deadpool, and that's not necessarily all that there is. There are obviously others floating around out there that have yet to be graded, but... Hey. For me, Bob, we're up. We're up to forty one hundred ninety three CGC oh, okay. nine so U.S. You get over four K forty one ninety three U.S. Drew. Uh, no, that's the count. Uh, oh, out oh, of sorry, sorry. out of twenty two thousand four hundred and seventy two graded copies, there are four thousand one hundred and ninety three CGC nine point eight. So for that character to me, though, that still seems low given the demand that is in existence for that character. You know, there's a supply and demand side to this stuff. And Deadpool is a high demand character. So that number does not scare me. And I also think, yeah, can that book pull back from obviously it did from its 3000 high, but that book is always going to have a certain floor to it, regardless of what happens. Just Deadpool's an extremely popular character and always will be. So that was one of the enticing things that I decided to put more money into this market, whether it's Deadpool or Hulk 181 or Giant Size X Men 1 or whatever you want to talk about, um, is. One, the census count side of things. And two, the floors are so much higher. You know, Deadpool is always going to be a fairly relevant, popular character. Miles Morales is always going to be a fairly popular, relevant character. Coming at it from the sports card side of things, I don't have to worry about him getting hurt. I don't have to worry about him getting irrelevant. I don't have to worry about him doing something stupid off the field, driving a car drunk, doing, you know, whatever it is. Most <clears throat> modern sports cards are going to be worthless or close to worthless in probably 10 years with the exception of a very few. There are very few players that actually hold long-term value. That is not the case with comic books. They might go up, they might go down, but the floor is extremely high. Mm, interesting. I mean, My hesitation. Oh, yeah. let me, I'll throw this in here. My hesitation yeah. with uh, new mutants, 98 and a nine, eight is the fact that there are those nine nines, 13 of them and the 10 O. So for me, I feel like that it's a great book. I have a nine six. I'm I'm not a Deadpool fan, so I didn't care to go after the nine eight. But from an investment standpoint, the nine eight's always going to be good, but it's never going to be the best. Those nine nines, and if anybody's ever dumb enough to sell that ten, are going to be just spectacular um, shows to watch when they go up because it's going to be brutal um, at the auction block. So yeah. 
but those are like, I mean, but like you said, that's less than 20, right? So it's still pretty mm -hmm. like, I mean, yes, maybe those will be five figure books like one day. I mean, we'll look at, look at that. Uh, there was on, I think comic link, maybe three or four months ago, there was mm -hmm. a ASM three sixty one nine nine that sold mm -hmm. for like 50,000. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. It you was know, that nuts. guy feels bad right now. I mean, oh just, god uh, god nuts. i think <laughs> we're gonna get there like, we're gonna get there went like 5x well, with the with last the, one. uh with the ultimate fallout 4 i mean my concern if i'm somebody that's hoarding these right i think there's not as many miles fans as there are like diehard mile fans that want that book in their collection like there is deadpool fans and, and i could be wrong but it just feels like the nostalgia factor is 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 stronger for 90s characters, right? Um, so when he gets an Easter egg or he shows up or there's a cameo, it's something, right? How many of those copies on, of 9.8s are going to be getting sold at the same time on eBay? I mean, yeah. It, how many of those 3,200 that are out there right now are going to instantly be thrown up for sale? That's mm -hmm. that's and the I tough part with moderns. You you don't yeah. have nearly as much control as you think over your pricing because you're at the whims of like whoever has the lowest one up on eBay. Well, at that's that moment. A, that's that would be my fear as far as like people that are really expecting to see that book like hit seven thousand. I mean, I I don't. I I feel like if I, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. I'm just saying I'm a little bit. I'd be a little bit skeptical that. If you're putting all your eggs in that basket, don't get, don't get me wrong. You're you're gonna do well, but I don't I don't know if it's gonna go up as 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 much as people think it is because of that fact. Because I think if we see Deadpool and you take the number of nine eights that hit that next day versus the amount of nine eights that we're gonna see the day after Miles, I think it's gonna be a big big difference um, in, in Miles' favor as far as the number available to you. And and like Ryan said people are going to start undercutting each other if they start to see, you know, that one copy sell for 500 less than they have it listed for. And then the next copy sells at 600 less than they have. It's, it's going to become a domino effect. You know, how much of that do we see? And to what extent? That's that's the fun part. We get to watch, right? So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there's one, definitely one a lot of flex there. photos out there of just stacks of Fallout 4s. Oh, that's what I'm saying. And, and yeah. those people aren't aren't sitting there to hold 20 copies in their collection. Mm -hmm. You know that 19 of those at a minimum are going up for sale, right? So, and yeah. that's one person, right? I mean, yep. we're we're definitely going to get into those, especially when we start to talk about Eternals and Special Marvel just and you know, as we're kind of going throughout the year here. But but before we belabor that point because save some of that stuff for for when we get here but i do want to ask this because we're talking about ultimate fallout 4 and how it maybe sets up the next slide like we can see like just looking at the graph you know you see like it kind of had the april 2021 little bit of the correction and now kind of riding that little uh ride up again and you know you I'll could say that felt like market manipulation to yeah, me yeah well, well well so well, let me ask this let me ask this and i'm gonna go to this next slide and maybe we can start talking about this is this book going up because we got that into the spider verse like little tease or when people buy this book is there <clears> some <throat> small expectation that miles is eventually going to come to the mcu and where i'm going with this is like you know if we look at the first parents of modok book that modok had his cartoon you know that book uh, didn't feel like it moved at all and then the evil doctor strange the what if book like that was all throughout the what if cartoon, but like didn't really move until we got evil Dr. Strange in the Dr. Strange trailer where it's like, Oh, now he's going to be in the live action. So maybe we can start with the ultimate fall four, but like, what do you guys think as far as like animation? I, I saw newbie, you were shaking your head. So let's start with you I, here. Like, what do you think I, about this stuff? I think, I think when we think of animation, we think of like the younger generation, right? I mean, we're all pretty above like our thirties. Um, I think we think of the younger generation and, I, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know i say that because like i know a few guys when when we've had this conversation they've been like new i've talked to my kids I've, I've talked to my kids friends when they've come and uh you know what when i ask them who spider-man is they say miles so i go oh well, okay, is their so kids I, friend dropping four grand on a book 
<laughs> but you know what I mean? Like that's that's who they think like Spider Man is, right? So I think that there's that, and I know in one particular case where somebody's solely bought a nine eight. I don't want to say his name. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. But you know, he bought a nine eight just simply because he asked his nephews and a bunch of family members, like the younger kids, who's Spider Man to them, and they said Miles. So he was like, Miles is the future. Miles is the future. Ah. I don't know. With animation, I mean, Miles, that, that book is going to reach a crazy ceiling once we get Spider-Verse 2. Um, but I will say, when we get to, you know, Miguel O'Hara there, uh, I don't think those Spider-Man 2099 books are going to do the same. And I've heard people say, oh, man, they're going to they're going to be up there with Miles. I, I don't think so. The only one that might even come close is if you can swing a 9-8 of the Toy Biz variant. The white 2099. The white one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 9-8 to that are like a, a unicorn. Now? Yeah. So I think, I think the thing with Ultimate Fallout 4 with the recent rise is it's a it's a it's a one two combo of you got to the end of the Spider Verse 2 trailer that to kind of prime the market and then Spider Man 3 happened right in its heels. Yeah. And we got that one off electro line, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yes, and, exactly. and so you exactly. already had it going like this. And then Spider Man 3 is, you know, every Spider Man key is going nuts right now, whether it's whether it's spec or not. If it's got Spider Man on the on the front of it, people are buying it. So it's sending that to even more the next level. And if I, you know, I know a lot of people shine on the second prints, but if you wanted a low risk move on Ultimate Fallout 4, the second print's extremely reasonable right now. And if everything, if the night, if the first print goes way up and you're just looking to buy it to flip, it's a way less investment. Yeah. It'll probably go up a certain percentage point if you're not looking to hold it long term anyway. No. I think there's plenty of viable options to make money off ultimate fallout four. If that's your angle without even going to actual ultimate fallout four. Cause right. that even then spins off into, you know, edge of the spider verse number two, because anything miles feeds in the spider Gwen spec feeds into this spec feeds into that spec. You know, it's, it's just the snowball rolling down the hill right now. So yeah, Sp Spider-Man my spec is, is just different. I, I, I feel like it's just, it's an unfair fight. Like we have, you have this graphic up and it's, it's just not a fair fight, you know. So animation aside, you could Spider Man is always going to do better than everything else, uh, right. just about, right? So it's kind of not a fair comparison when we look at, you know, uh, Edge of Spider Verse stuff, um, Into the Spider Verse stuff, compared to any other animation, because you also they also time, you know, um, Neo hit it perfect. They timed it with the Spider Man movie along with mm -hmm. that one that one line, and now everybody's just like, oh, and all the rumors running rampant on the internet about Spider Gwen and your Garfield, blah blah blah. It's just feeding on itself. So there's, it's it's such a hard to say is is it because of the animation or not? Because you have so many other things going for it, Spider Man movie and just Spider Man in general, which is just always gonna do better in the mainstream than everything else. Right. And even on so, an animation level, I mean, into the Spider Verse, if you just take Spider Man out yeah. of it and just judge it on the animation alone, it's next level compared to anything we've ever seen before. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so, so my thought on on this is is that you need to look at who the target audience is as well. That's something I've I've really noticed is that because uh, Invincible also had huge spikes. I mean, I bought my nine six in two thousand nineteen for three hundred bucks, and I sold it for two grand this year. So I mean, like that's. That's you can have big jumps in stuff that isn't necessarily Spider-Man, but it's that show is designed for adults, you, right. you know. And so I think that's where you where you really need to look at, at some of these different shows like Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur looks like it's going to be designed for kids. So yeah. I personally right. wouldn't be going. How, after, how after would you fit? So how would you factor in the Modoc show and Hit Monkey, which are kind of adult like, but do they get like a knock because they're comedy? Like they're not cool. Well, Modoc was on Hulu, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hit Monkey's on Hulu too. Uh, yeah, and I think that part, yeah, Hulu, Hulu is a killer for it, it's. It, I think that is something that does not help uh, a property if it's on Hulu because mm. it's just a much more limited uh, audience. But um, the the other thing I was going to mention with that is that that's why I personally, I I would if if I was somebody who had invested heavily in uh, Kamala Khan, I would probably be uh, looking to move those books because that show mm. also looks like it's going to be for kids. And, and so gonna, I think it's going to be because you're, you're going to have the stuff like how when uh, they had that super pets, you know, movie that that the or whatever the one where uh, uh, Dwayne uh, you know, Rock Johnson, you know, like everybody was screaming that they didn't like it. And it's like it's designed for kids, you know, and it's like it's like you, you've got to you've got to look at like what, who are those properties targeting because the people that are spending the money are not kids you know it's yeah. it's people our age that are, that are yeah. dropping that kind of money has anybody 
kept tabs on TOS 94 since the, uh, like the Corey stole, like quantum mania, um, live action MCU MODOK, uh, I, conversation started. Is anybody I, I checked in on it? I haven't checked the numbers, but when we did our video, uh, drew, when I was looking uh-huh. at comparisons, yeah, you know, th- this book was not moving. Now that was before that oh, yeah. Jim Carrey spec, but like, yeah, maybe it's picked up because now he might I've be live action. So. Yeah, I've literally never had anybody ask for the first mm. appearance of Modoc ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, Drew, the, so what, like, I mean, but f- it's fair to say, like, we're going to get the spike with these characters, mm-hmm. but the kids 20 years from now, you know, maybe Ultimate yeah. Fallout 4 does hit that $7,000 price range. I mean, along with yeah. infl- inflation and then that kid coming of age to where they have money. Yeah. And, you know, I, I can I can see that because to me, like Peter Parker is my Spider-Man. You know, I got up on Saturday mornings. I watched the Fox cartoon. It was yeah. Peter Parker. You know, that was my guy. These kids are having that same experience with Miles. So in 20 years when, you know, they've got student loans and a mortgage and a job that gives them a little bit of extra money to spend on comics and other stuff that's not really important, they're going to want this book. Um, so I think... Um, it's it's really a no-brainer. Ultimate Fallout 4 is the ASM 300 or the Hulk 181 of the, the was it late aughts? Was it 09 or when yeah. was, yeah, 09? I, I, it's obviously the hit book of that decade. So I think if you're going to drop money on a 9.8 for a long-term hold that's, you know, 10, some 15 years old, that is hands down the book you should go for. I, I just don't like when people say it's the AF fifty. It'll be AF fifteen. Like people that are expecting oh, yeah. it's going yeah. to be like a yeah. hundred thousand no. dollar book. Like yeah, no. years from now, I, I think you're no. wrong. Like yeah, no. Well, I, I'm not right. saying that. I'm saying like you know, <laughs> it, it could do like ASM three hundred. I and I I'm yeah. probably even like one eighty one. It's probably a bit of a stretch. You know, it's probably never going to yeah. be that high but it's it's in my opinion as things look right now it's the the clear winner you know if if we were at the olympics it would have the gold medal for sure yeah for sure i think the good future comp for it would be like giant size x-men it's not on the hulk 181 level but it's like the Mm -hmm. dawn of the new era of spider-man like giant size x-men was yeah Yeah. could be Uh, and in the same way it it's kind of an offshoot you know it doesn't happen in the main story just like giant so yeah i think that's a really good correlation Cool. Well, we got to shout out the super chat here. Sigma Comics with the five dollars. Thank you so much. Don't sleep on indies. I agree with that. Uh, here comes Calico on Kickstarter. Should be in your collection. First 30 seconds of our Kickstarter video says it all. Okay. Yeah. So Sigma, I think is an indie comic publisher. He's got a book called Calico on Kickstarter. If you guys want to go check it out, you know, maybe check out some indie stuff. Um, all right. Well, let's go on now from animation. And I know Matt, you know, might have to check out soon, but you can decide if you want to kind of weigh in on this topic, or maybe I can start this topic with you, but we got to just, you know, sure. cover our bases throughout the course of the year, you know, from some, from some massive sales that came last year, record sales. Uh, you know, I think there's two sales on here that doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. But there's one book on here that, you know, maybe we need to talk a little bit more about. I'll let you figure out which one I think, but AF15, uh, 9.6, 3.6 mil, you know, uh, Action Comics 8.5, 3.25, and then 9.8 Ghost Rider for quarter million. What do you think, Matt, of these? Is any, anything jump out to you when you when you heard the news for these things? Yeah, first, I just wanted to say it was really hard for me to part with that AF15, but I just, yeah. figured, you know, I had, I had <laughs> to do it. It was the right time. Yeah. It was the right time to do it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that, that spotlight five i mean it's it's jumped you know to say the least uh and i always you know i always point to six because literally you could have bought like probably an 80 or better six if we're talking like uh before 2021 you could have bought that for mm, i want to say an eight five i remember buying in 2020 for a hundred dollars okay Jeez. so his second appearance just see what his second appearance is doing now. And that tells the story. Um, I think regardless of which uh, variation of Ghost Rider that we get, this book is not going to see a, a, an enormous dip. You know, and we've talked about it on here before uh, that the floors have just been just blown through the roof. So it doesn't matter where, you know, you know, if we get, 
you know, if we don't get Johnny Blaze, you know, are we going to see Spotlight Five plummet? I, I, I don't think that's I don't think that's the case. This is another. This is a great, great Bronze Age book that kind of got forgot. I don't want to say got forgotten about, but it just wasn't in that. It wasn't in the top three, right? We had, you know, everybody was looking at silver, and then silver just kind of got out of hand. So everybody started looking at bronze, and we started getting to, you know, the Hulks and the Punishers, and you know, uh, uh, GSX one, you know, and this kind of was outside of the top five, you know, maybe even close to ten, and now people are making their way down the list of blue chip bronze age books. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, there's ghost rider and okay. Now there's rumors. And then they attack uh, Keanu's re reuse name to it. It's just created again, a perfect storm. I love the cover. I mean, if you're, you know, even if you're a nineties fan, you still love Johnny blaze, right. Yeah. Uh, as you, as ghost rider. Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's a book that I have in my collection. I'm happy to have it. Uh, so is there still money to be made? There is the question. I think I it's a good, you know, I think parking your money, which is what, you know, Neil talked about before. It's, it's, it's not a bad long-term investment because yeah. at some point we're going to get some variation of Ghost Rider and we're just, even if it's not Johnny Blaze, we're always going to think he's next. He's next. Yeah. And it's a, it's a bronze age blue chipper. So why not? You know, yeah. why not? I mean, and it's just it's another great example of a nine eight sale last year that has drugged the lower grades way up. Yeah, I mean, yes. Look at Batman yeah. one eighty one. You know, is the other one that comes to mind with that huge nine eight sale. Yeah, and, yeah. and Tech right. three fifty nine. That one had had a big nine eight sale as well. I think. Like, yeah. I don't remember. If it was like. Do you think? Uh, do you think the guy that has the Amazing Fantasy fifteen is gonna re slab it? Try it for that nine eight. <laughs> Crack yeah. and press. the slab, right? So you know, you never know. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, Crack maybe. Impress. Well, well, well right, oh right. Let me, let me, let me ask you this, Ryan, because you watch a lot of the heritage stuff. You saw, because yeah, you that know, that was a heritage. One. I was watching that one. Yeah. I was like, Holy you, crap! You, you see these book big, big, big sales. I mean, do these numbers surprise you, or are they well, kind of like yeah, that right, one did. Okay. That that one, I think that one surprised everybody. I, I remember I was uh, I, I watched ETA Nick's video as well, where he was doing like a live stream of that when he was like, "What is going on?" You know, and, and uh, I mean, I get it that it has a low census count. I get it that there's only like four or three or whatever it is in a nine eight, but still, that is now. I, I mean, I I don't think I'm incorrect in saying that is the most expensive Bronze Age nine eight, and it is, by it like, is definitely the most by, by like triple. Book, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like the Hulk one eighty one was. I think 87,000. I mean, that's, cr that's crazy to think about the fact that Marvel spotlight five first ghost rider triple what the next highest nine, eight goes for. I mean, granted, I don't know what maybe like a star Wars one, you know, price variant the 35, you know, gonna go yeah. for. that. That could be, that could be something that, that hits some crazy number. Cause I don't think a nine, eight even exists yet. Yeah. Uh, not that, that I'm but, aware of, uh, but, but you, still, you know, it's, it's crazy to think that that is the book <laughs> that is yeah. the most expensive many, age nine, eight, how many nine, eight, one eighty ones are there? I don't remember off the top of my head. Oh, there's a lot of them. There's yeah, a I lot. Think like three. I mean, I think this maybe. is just a simple, a supply and demand thing. There's what four ghost rider or four spotlights yeah. in a nine, yeah. eight. And how many of them are white pages? Uh, that I don't know. Right. That, that, yeah, that, no. Unfortunately, the census don't say. Uh, if yeah. they're white but I mean, you know, odds are not all four of them. Are. I think it's just Correct. a very yeah. simple supply and demand matter. To me, knowing that the CGC census on that spotlight is only four, th that price makes total sense. But also, but, yeah, it's also it's all, all it takes is two people. That's all it takes is two people. Yeah, and that's it just takes one person. It's one, of those, yeah. it's one of those tricky parts. And, and I know this is something else I, I, I watch his channels. And so I think he has some good points. So this is ETA Nick again. He talks about like a, a pyramid uh, with these, you know, and as you go up, there's less and less buyers as you yeah. get to higher and higher price points. Yeah. And with that one, if an, if one of those other nine eights comes up, I, wa I wonder what would happen on the bidding, because if that one person that now has their copy is like, I don't want it, would it would it drop significantly or would that one person bid it up as well and risk getting a second copy <laughs> yeah. to protect the value of their book? Wow. I, I think those are those are possible options that could happen with that, because it's like what we saw with Giant Size X-Men 1. That book jumped from like 80,000 to 36,000 to 60,000. It was all over the place. And it's because there's like two or three people probably at any given one of those auctions that was willing to spend that money. Yeah. And, you know, you just, you run out of, you run out of people at a point yeah. uh, that are willing to spend that kind of money on a comic. The other thing, yeah, 100, 142 nine eights and one nine nine. 
there's 199. That'll be the yeah. interesting book if that one ever sells. For what? Uh, 181 or, or yeah, 181. 181. 181. It sucks though. It's an <clears throat> old label CGC book. Nobody, nobody is cracking that book out. No. You will no. never. You don't think they'll reholder re it? They won't reholder it? No. No. Your risk uh, too many of downgrading it is no. too high. No way. Okay. You can okay. breathe on it the wrong way. You don't even take that book to Dallas. Like, you don't even take it to the city. Oh. So the other, uh, the opposite side of that, though, about the, the, you know, when two people compete for a book, a high end book like this, and then one drops off, don't underestimate the, the people that run in these circles that are buying these books of, well, shit, he got one. Now I need one because my collection needs to be on. There's a lot of bragging rights that go on yeah. on this. High yeah. end stuff. Pissing yeah. contest. So it could even make the next, if another Marvel spotlight came up. The person that missed out on it could be like, well, I got to get this one. And then all it takes is one other person to be like, well, my buddy Joe got one. And I, <laughs> shit, if he has one, I have to have one now. Because yeah, there's yeah, some it's yeah. when you and get if, at this uh, level of prices. Yeah. And if someone, if there's a sale of this, then, you know, and you have FU money, then who cares? Like, you'd be like, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, there's a precedent for this book selling of this. So I'll pay this. Um, but I, I think one thing that we saw, because on the sports card side of things, we saw the same thing. Like, rare low pop cards like this went for astronomical sums of money in january and february and what a lot of speculation was and whether it's true or not we don't really know um to this point there was a lot of speculation that some of the fractional share companies were driving these up because they have oodles of money to spend and they need these assets to offer as fractional pieces and there's only yeah. so many that exist and there's a lot of those fractional share companies out there and the yeah. one that has the best inventory or the best items gets the most user slash eyes. So there was a lot of speculation that on this low pop sports card stuff that the fractional share companies were bidding against each other in some cases, mm. driving mm -hmm. these prices up. And I'm sure the same well, thing is happening on some of these comic books too. Well, let me pause you there, Rob, because we're going to talk about market manipulation next. But before we do, we got to say good night to our good friend, Matt Forge here, who has got to run. He hung out with us for quite some time. Thank you, Matt, for hanging out. Uh, maybe you can kind of leave the chat right here with just, you know, so what, what, what can people expect from the principal defects and, and just let them know where they can find you. A lot of nonsense, that's for sure, right? If you've seen any of our shows before. Uh, yeah, no, this was a blast. Thanks for having me, Mickey. Uh, you know, nice to meet uh, some of you guys here that I haven't met before. Newbie. Of Likewise. course, we will see. We will talk again soon. Absolutely. Um, this this was a lot of fun. The chat's been great. Uh, I, I'm going to watch the rest of this on replay because there's a lot of good topics still left. I wish I was able to hang around. But uh, yeah, we're. I think our links in the description. We're going to start up our our, our channel, kind of rolling again with the videos. Uh, Specul. You know, we do some spec talk, and we obviously do uh, stuff on comic book cover art. You know, we do new comic book day preview every Monday. Um, and then we do a live show every other Wednesday uh, right now. I think that's the day we're going to keep it, but it's definitely going to be every other week. Those tend to get a little out of control, so you never know what's going to happen in there. So it's it's fun. We try to keep it fun, comic-related, and, you know, MCU, if it's if it's movie-related and it's comic book-related, we always talk about that, too. And there's three of us, me, Guy Forge, and uh, Jay the Butcher 105 So if you haven't checked us out, you know, come give us a look. Uh, might not be for you. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. <laughs> If, we're definitely if, not for everybody yeah well if you if you like if you like my channel you're in here right now you like my videos you're definitely gonna like the defects video so definitely go in the description find their channel if you aren't subscribed i don't know what you're doing but go over there subscribe and uh matt you know thanks again man so much for hanging out and uh you know have a great night thanks guys have a good one all see right. you man all right so Let's pick it back up. Rob, you were talking about market manipulation. I feel like that's a good time to jump back into this topic right here because, you know, market manipulation. I remember you, I think you had a video sometime this year where there was, what was it? PWCC had some like eBay manipulation. They're like a big card seller on eBay for those of you yeah, who they're know. They're a big consigner. They sell comic books too on occasion. Okay. Okay. So there was a lot of that. I got the slide of the video game thing in here. Um, obviously we're talking about comic books here, but you know, what, what, what is your guys' thoughts in terms of market manipulation? You think it's pre prevalent? You think it matters honestly for someone like, you know, say me, who's like, I'm going to go buy like this comic book and I'm going to spend a thousand dollars. Does it really even matter for someone like me? Um, what's your guys' thoughts on something like that? I mean, I, I think it's it's inevitable. It will be out there. You, you can't. I mean, it, it, there's just there's no question that it happens at some level. Uh, but it, the question is, does it happen at a level that that really impacts the whole market? And I 
I personally don't think so. Now I, I know like within certain, within certain books, I would say maybe it's, or in this case, like with the video games, like if, if anybody's watched those videos that been, have been put out about that, I mean, it, it seems pretty damning. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, but, but I think it's, it's largely within small segments, you know, where, where people are, are targeting certain books, but I, I don't think it's something where it's across the board, you know, just massive manipulation everywhere. I mean, I've had, I've had plenty of books that I've sold that have been at, at, a, a new record and it wasn't somebody I knew or it wasn't like my my brother buying it or something like that. You know, I've added plenty of books that sell like that. And it's somebody that wants that book and is willing to pay that price for that book. Yeah. I think it definitely happens for sure. And it happens a lot. I don't think it happens as much as Facebook and YouTube comments want it to believe that it happens. You know, the tinfoil hat crowd comes out anytime stuff like this happens because they don't want to believe it and it's the easiest thing to blame it on, but it for sure happens. Show bidding obviously happens. There's a, a billion different examples of it, but I don't think it's as prevalent as the community wants to think that it is, but it for sure definitely happens in any collectibles market. The, the eBay Every, zero feedback bidders. <laughs> yeah. And, and part of it is, you know, that someone in the comments mentioned something about, you know, like, you know, these big time auction houses do it and no one bats an eye. The reason most people don't bat an eye is because they don't care to a degree, because if they see, you know, an amazing fantasy 15 set a new record sale, they probably own a bunch of other Spider-Man books and it's probably going to help them out on the back end. So they're not mm -hmm. going to cause a big ruckus about it because now mm -hmm. their non AF 15s are probably worth an extra 10% because of the focus that that brought onto the Spider-Man market or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people do turn a blind eye to it, but like I said, it definitely happens. I just don't think it's as prevalent as the internet as a whole wants to believe that it happens. Newbie, newbie, what about you? If you found out tomorrow that Marvel Spotlight 5 9.8 was a, a a shill bid or or market manipulation, would you care? Would it would you would that change anything with how you felt about comic collecting? Man, um to be honest, I mean Ghost Rider's not really in like my top 5. I mean, he's a cool character and everything. I just it wouldn't change my day to day. I wouldn't yeah. go to bed like pissed off. I'd probably still have a great sleep um you know i i don't know it just depends like you know like all these guys are saying I, I don't think it happens as much are there people that do it absolutely um you know that that's why we need to talk about it if if we didn't talk about it then that meant nobody did it but you know with social media and youtube channels and you know people being so connected as they are i mean you're you're bound to get it uh there's a lot of books and sometimes you know for me, for example, you know, people say, oh, newbie, man, you find all these crazy books. Like, where are you in Canada? It's like just luck, right? Like I, just because I came across a, you know, long box of, say, one of those hot books that was hot during the show. I mean, am I manipulating the market because I found them for a dollar and selling them at 20? You know, like so it just depends on uh, everything, basically. It, there's a lot of factors. So I don't know. But, you know, like Rob said, I, I think it's not as much as people think like on a grand scale so right right <laughs> i think luck is definitely better than skill what's that i said luck is better than skill oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i think the market manipulation stuff specifically is probably more prevalent on the ultra high end mm -hmm. than it is mm -hmm. on your daily ebay transactions because the stuff that does not sell very often or super low census count or pop count or whatever you want to call it there's not a enough sales data in history to back it up so one sell a year can swing a whole market uh, mm -hmm. a hulk 181 even in a 98 sell fairly frequently there's a data trail on that so you could see if something looks way out of line uh, a, a spotlight for ghost rider how often does a 98 come up that's much to me stuff like that is much more likely to be manipulated than a giant size x-men number one because those sell constantly you know in various mm -hmm. different grades so it's easier to see outliers on stuff like that. Right. I think on the lower end, what is more prevalent is shill bidding, which is a form of market manipulation. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know that it's, I think there's degrees, you know what I mean? There's uh, pick whatever high end auction house doing shady things to drive up the price on an ultra rare book. That's one level of market manipulation. And another is shill bidding on an ultimate fallout for to, to get an extra couple hundred bucks on a sale to put more money in their pocket, not to necessarily shift the entire market. They're both yeah, market yeah. manipulation, but they're, there's two different things going on there in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. And, and, and also, the, like the reason I, I had, 
the reason I had mentioned the that that the ultimate Fallout Four felt felt sketchy is if I don't, if you if you kind of look at that uh, um, uh, the 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 uh, what is it the GPA chart. Uh, there's basically it had dropped down, and then there's the the gray area, which kind of shows like the range of sales. Yeah. And there's a spike mm-hmm. right before it starts to go up, and that spike were two like I think like back to back heritage sales. I remember watching them, and they were nine eighths for that book, and they hit like thirty eight hundred or thirty nine hundred, mm. and um and I was like, what the hell's going on? There's like ten copies on eBay right now for for twenty eight. You know, and so it was that or whatever it was, it was like they were for two into 20 or something. But but regardless, that's the one that that really threw me off because it happened like a month before then things started moving. It's like they were the catalyst almost that people saw, oh, these these jumps. And then you get people that will then see that jump. They'll go on eBay, buy up the cheaper copies. And then all that's left are the higher copies. And it just kind of feeds itself. And so that's why that one felt uh, a little iffy to me. Yes, she'll be she'll be billing or bidding, excuse me, kind of working as like a, a PR machine for a certain kind of book. Yeah, um, don't get me wrong, it happens, right? Because we wouldn't yeah. be talking about it if it didn't. So you know, because I've seen some of the comments and like, no, trust me, I get it. There's you know, there's people, and there's you know, groups and this and that. Like it, it happens, right? So yeah. it sucks, but you know, I like to think as a whole, like Rob said, I, I, you know, when you look at it on a grand scale, I don't think it's like a majority of it. So yeah. right. I agree. What do you think, Drew? Any little thoughts before I move on to the next one? Yeah, I think they pretty well covered it. Um, you know, the Carl Jobes videos were pretty telling, I thought. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't know that we'll ever really know. Um, yeah. But it, it, it's, it smells fishy. I'll put it that way. Um, but in all honesty, last year was just so insane. I'm not opposed to just throwing out most of the the crazy high uh, sales prices and just saying people were freaking crazy and let's stick somewhere to the, the median. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Maybe the person who bought the top is just embarrassed and they've, you know, yeah. cl- they're claiming market manipulation. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, yeah. I'm not really a player in those markets. So, uh, I mean, I guess it, it affects us all a little bit, but For I don't sure. sweat it. Sure. All right. Well, going on now to the next topic, we had shill bidding, we had market manipulation, a lot of FUD in the market, and that caused the big correction later on in the year, right? Uh, so, you know, we kind of showed the slide earlier, right? We had those Disney Plus shows, and then we got to this moment, and maybe you can say it started with Black Widow, but I kind of felt like what if was really the time when I was surprised that no books were it's like that that chase right that chase for like this is the episode this week this is the book i should get it just like didn't feel like it was there Mm -hmm. i mean of course there's movement but it just wasn't the same as say loki and then we got you know shang chi well received movie but his uh marvel special edition took a big correction eternals we're going to talk about that book in a second uh you know whether or not like the reviews were bad had a role in that and then venom as well we got to talk about amazing spider-man 361 as well so we get the correction and then here's just some of the charts i think i want to talk about with certain books right we have well what's going on with iron man one here what, what's well, going wait, on here? wait 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 don't don't jump ahead look at the control group we, we got the control group right here so we have eternals number immediately one. getting defensive yeah. <laughs> but, no, let, he let, feels let me, attacked let me, let me just say right now i'm gonna put it out there i think iron man number one at that grade is like one of the best like health of the market books, in my opinion, because I mean, sure, there's spec value. Maybe RDJ comes back at some point in the future, but like, you know, Iron Man is kind of done, but he's beloved. And, you know, if we look at that book, like it's always being purchased, people always kind of want it in their collection. It's at a price point where there's enough people who can get it. So, you know, it's like in that sweet spot. So I feel like it's a top tier silver age cover and it's a top tier book. Yeah. So, so it's as beautiful as any silver age book. So where that book goes, so too does the market IMHO, but let's talk about Eternals. Number one, you just got to look at the graph right there. What we got with the height of the, of the peak of the movie. And then, or maybe that was in April. And then where we are now with the movie, uh, Master of Kung Fu, Special Marvel Edition 15. Uh, this is a 9.0. I picked that one because of the you know uh, sample size. Uh, but you can see is the graph right there. And then ASM 361 with Carnage, you know, not maybe as steep a decline. Took some time, but uh, generally speaking, we we saw the 
rise and then we saw the fall and then the Iron Man is the control group. So what is your guys' thoughts on maybe some of these books? Maybe I'll start with you. I know you've had, you've talked a lot about 361, I think. Uh, um, yeah, that. you know, and I had a, a 9.6 and I actually got offered a 900 Canadian uh, for mine uh, just before the movie kicked off and I sold it. Like I mm. took the money and ran the, yeah. you know, people that were believing in that book, you know, great. Uh, I got a buddy of mine who's top two characters carnage. And he was like, you're crazy. You're crazy. I mean, I can go buy like 10 of them now with the money that, that I got mm -hmm. basically um, just never really saw that there was going to be a lot of potential. And I get it. You know, when you're very close to a character, you just want to say, no, 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 that character is going to be around for like 20 movies. It's like, mm, no, I think when in a situation like that, even Eternals, right? Um, you should have taken the money. And then, you know, like everybody on the panel has said, you know, you are pretty much able to get Eternals and ASM 361, like for pretty much nothing now uh, for what they were going for. The Shang-Chi one, I know that uh, Ryan is a big fan of. Um, the Iron Man one, I mean, we didn't, Iron Man didn't even have a movie and yet, you know, it's, it's on here. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm a little, like I'm a little... movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, no. But the I Iron Man one is representative of like every book had a correction this year. Yeah. So, yeah. so but, it just kind of goes to show you that like, that's the market. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when you this... look at like Eternals one, it's like, whoa, that book. I think we're also just too quick. Right. And, and, you know, guys, you know, and I know Ryan will, Cause we've had this conversation, but like it, we, we move on to the next thing, like super quick, right? Because we have so many things going on now, whether it be shows or movie, whatever, right? Like it's, it's like, okay, I seen the movie. Okay. What's next? What's next? Right? Like people watching Eternals as soon as the blade, sorry, I should have said spoiler just in case, I, you know, nobody's seen <laughs> Eternals yet. Uh, but you know, at the end of the movie, when, when blade, you know, says that line, everybody was like blade. Nobody talked about Eternals. It was just blade blade yeah. everyone's on to blade mm -hmm. you know and, and all that so like i think that that also hurts it we don't have that like eternals is here i'm gonna buy it it's hot for a while it's like no you you sell it now and then you lose money and then down the road a, a month a month and a half two months it's it's you know a shell of what it was you know just before the movie right so i mean yeah. th this is pretty standard for what we see with these books though leading into movies it was yeah. accentuated this year because the trailers for eternals and uh, special or and for uh, uh, Shang Chi, Shang -Chi came out in April May of this right. year or of right. last yeah. year, which was like the craziest time for prices already. So you had the trailer, which is all the first trailer is the peak price for those books, and so you had that combined with it was also the peak time for books in general, and so you had a, a real high spike there. Now, personally, uh, I think. Special Marvel Edition 15 is probably a book that's, and like Newbie said, a book that I think is, as it comes down, that's a book to buy again. I mean, it's yeah, not like yeah. he's gone. He's coming back in, 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 a, in a slightly uh, similar vein with Eternals. Now, uh, Special Marvel Edition was received a lot, or uh, Shang-Chi was received a lot more favorably. And so that's why that one's maybe a little bit better uh, to pick up than, than Eternals. But um, but the, uh, the Iron Man up there, that's, it's something I've talked about a number of times, like where we have... We saw these huge spikes earlier this year, and then you had everything correct, but yeah. not everything necessarily should have corrected. And so it was just like everything just sold off. But then now you're having some books that are coming back up and even setting new highs above what they were hitting earlier this year. And so that that's what it's it's becoming, you know, kind of more knowing uh, what to buy. It's a little more focused compared to earlier this year where it was just everything. Right. True. My I mean, biggest... Go oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Rob. Go jump in. I was going to say, my two biggest takeaways from this screen grab are 361 is the perfect example of they let you buy them back. Like that is the yeah. textbook example of they let you buy them back. Don't get me wrong. It's a great cover. I love Carnage. I would love to have one of my collection. It looks great on a shelf. That's a book you can find anytime you want it. Anytime yeah. you want it, you can find one. If you can make a good profit on that book, you just sell it and then you just wait. You'll eventually be able to get it back. My other big takeaway is, is I agree 100% with Ryan. Um, looking at these just very quickly, that Marvel Special Edition feels like an amazing buying opportunity just looking at these four books on this screen just because of exactly what he said that movie was very well received i enjoyed it a ton that character is 100 going to be a major factor in whatever the mcu does next do the eternals come back yes um i would be a little bit more concerned about that one just based off of the reception of that movie but that being said the second we get more eternal stuff whether it's them showing up in another movie or whatever that book is probably going to creep back up again to some degree but i think um, 
the special edition has a lot more room to go up than anything else on this screen. Yeah. Well, Drew, Drew, let me let me bring you in here, and let me just ask mm -hmm. you this: because is maybe Shang Chi is kind of a special case. Let's let's table that book for a second. Okay. But but with Eternals number one and ASM mm -hmm. three sixty one, is is the correction of these books due to the fact that these movies were not well received? I mean, I know ASM three sixty one was maybe or Venom two was maybe well received. I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But was it was it because the correction was not well received or? Let's be honest, were all three of these books that everybody had the plan that they were going to flip them, essentially. And what had happened in what we've discussed, you know, prior to this, where you guys said, it's like, as soon as someone tries to sell their book and then you get past the movie, and it's like, oh, I got to sell mine. I got to sell mine. I got to sell mine. And you just keep undercutting each other. Like, mm -hmm. What wasn't that the plan? I mean, I, look, I'll be honest. Like, I, I had I got an Eternals one, and my plan was like, I'm gonna sell mine as soon as I get that first trailer. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. I don't think I was alone with that. No, nope. so I'm with you. Was that the cause of these corrections? Like, what do you think? I think the clear difference between Eternals one and ASM three sixty one compared to Special Marvel Edition fifteen is you can't swing a dead cat near. A comic box without finding an ASM 361 or an Eternals 1. They are everywhere and they have been for forever. Special Marvel Edition 15, you have to dig a little harder for. They weren't as plentiful in the market. Um, and I think to that point, everybody already had these, whether they were planning to sell them or just happened to have them because they picked them up at a good price. They got out over their skis is is all it was everybody got caught up in the hype of the summer everything's going up everything's going to keep going up so i'm going to gonna buy more right um personally i think um 361 and a 98 in that lower price around 500 dollars. i don't think it's a terrible buy if you enjoy carnage and it's a book you want to have in your collection you're not going to retire off of it but I think it makes a lot more sense around 500 bucks right now. Eternals one. I think that was an internet book. I don't know who actually wanted to buy Eternals one. Um, I just, there didn't seem to be in my area, any excitement over that. Part of the reason there is that you've got this whole team of characters and their first appearances are scattered mm -hmm. across the first 11 issues of that series. Yeah. Um, so it's just, the team kind of dilutes the the appeal of the number one because you don't have that, you know, it's not as rock solid as like a full first appearance of the whole team, you know. Right, right. Um, so I, I I think special Marvel editions the best out of the three, obviously, which is why we tabled it. Um, but this is all. I, I, oh, sorry. Go go ahead, Drew. No, I, I was just gonna say I, I think these books had their 15 minutes of fame. They, they kind of overextended themselves and now they're just simply being faced with reality. Once again, yeah. mm -hmm. the Shang-Chi well, one though, I'll, I'll say, you know, and I've had a, you know, with how Ryan collects and stuff like that. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, like he said, we talk all the time, um, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Like I, Ryan reminds me, rem reminds me all the time. Hey, he's coming back. Hey, he's basically mm -hmm. an Avenger. Hey, he had, yeah. you know, conversations with this. Hey, something's coming for his 10 rings. Hey, you mm -hmm. know, so it's kind of one of those things that like, you know, out of sight, out of mind, especially if you're trying to make a flip, this is a perfect opportunity to buy it. Why? Because now everybody's on Star Wars and now next mm -hmm. everybody will be on, you know, Moon Knight and then She-Hulk, whether you like it or not, you know, that's just how it goes. And yep. then this book will just keep going down and down and be quiet. And then people are going to be like, oh, shit what book can I sell? I'll sell this one. Cause this one's over. Right. And I think yeah, that that's yeah. what happens. And this is a perfect opportunity to, you know, especially for an investment, or maybe this was your character that you liked and you missed out, or maybe you're just a new collector and you're like, this is my character now. Great opportunity to, to buy these books. Right. Right. Well, yeah, let me, that's, let, oh, go let ahead, me just quick, quickly move it to this next thing. So we can keep kind of moving it forward. Now we, we spoke a little bit on, like I asked that question where those books always intend to be flipped and things like that. But the one thing I did want to talk about is I got this supposition. And I'm going to start with Ryan or Drew. You guys can jump in on this. But let me ask you this. You know how earlier we were talking about, oh, like everyone starts specking like three years out, <laughs> right? So where it's like, now we're buying, you know, Armor Wars books right now or whatever the case <laughs> is, right? 
like, let, let me throw out this scenario. Is this totally stupid? I have a feeling because the game is everyone's going to put their books up at the, during the show, like a Hawkeye, like if I'm a buyer, is it like, strangely enough, like is one of the better times to buy this book actually going to be when there's an influx of inventory during the show, like a Hawkeye? Like if I wanted to get a first appearance of Hawkeye, just looking at the graph right there, you know, it's actually less than it was in April uh, during the show. Like, do I want to maybe buy when there's a bunch of sellers that are putting up their books uh, where they're trying to, you know, underbid each other and I have a good opportunity or, or what do you think? And, and let me just quickly just add to that is like, cause I have this suspicion and maybe Drew, you can weigh on this. Like if mm -hmm. I'm someone who has tales of suspense 57, I wanted to sell it during Hawkeye and I didn't get mm -hmm. the price I wanted. Yep. Maybe I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I'm just going to take it off of eBay and I'm just going to wait till the next time that Jeremy Renner shows up. So mm -hmm. So going back to my original question of like, when you get this influx of inventory during the show, is that maybe going to be the new window of 2022 of when to buy? Is Am I crazy to, to think that? What do you guys think? I think it depends on the circumstances. Like if the influx of inventory comes in and there are some auctions, I think that speaks better or, you know, provides you a better opportunity. But uh, what I've seen with a lot of these books is the inventory comes in, but they're all set prices and they're all set, but anywhere from 15 to 45% above FMV because everybody wants that big old bag of money. You know, um, mm -hmm. they're, they're not really based in reality. They're just, this is the, you want this book because this just came out. It's, it's front of your mind now. So pay me for it. I, I still stand by the fact that if you want to buy a book or you want to speculate on a book, you need to be doing your buying before anybody else is even talking about that book or thinking about that book. You've got to, you've got to be digging in the, the titles that other people yeah. are not looking at. Yeah. If you, if Drew, if Drew comes out with a video about a book, you're already too late. Yeah, exactly. If any of us are talking yeah. about a book, the ship has already left the port. Okay. Yeah. I always don't like whenever something is announced, I'm always like, all right, that's it for that. Like, cause there's, there's yeah. no point. It, you're already, like you said, you're already late, you know? Mm -hmm. So you, you always yeah. have to be looking where no one was looking. Right. So you, you, you could jump in late, but what, it, and you could jump in late and still make money. If, if your, mm -hmm. your goal is to flip, the problem is, is it raises your risk factor. Yeah. yeah. If you got in early, you have no risk. Cause you, yep. you're, it's probably not going to go below whatever the early price was. If you're that mm -hmm. early. Right. If you jump on the ship late, do you still have a chance to make a nice little profit? Yeah. You're going to make mm -hmm. less than the people that were on there before you. It just increases your chances of maybe missing the boat entirely exactly. when you jump off the dock. Yeah. People so might key... also think of you as a dirty flipper, though. But yeah. carry on your point. <laughs> <laughs> the key takeaway is if you see one of us shopping at an LCS, look over our shoulder. What are we buying? What yeah. are we pulling out? What are we taking home? Oh, right. I can't wait. I, I can't wait for this slide. I, right, right. Yeah. I, I had to just jump because it felt like a funny time to jump. But Ryan, to talk about talk about the last slide. And, and I posed you that question of buying it when there's an influx of supply. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, so for me, I, I mean, I'm, I'm always... I, I like to, I often like to buy on, on things like auctions, you know? And so if, yeah. if there's... Because if I can, if I get an opportunity, that's where I often will find an opportunity to to get something at below fair market value. Because, uh, uh, like Drew said, a lot of times, you know, when it's fixed price, and I, I do this as well, you list it, you know, a little higher because you often expect somebody to knock you down. You know, they're gonna yeah. message you and say like, "Hey, will you take this kind of thing?" Um, but, uh, uh, I mean, you can definitely time stuff. It depends on it. I I've noticed it depends on the property. So if it's a if it's a movie, um. I would wait until after the movie if you want to buy it like that. That's when I would that's when I would pick it up. It, you tend like I said, you see the peak at the first trailer and then it kind of tends to trickle down as you go through in the movie release and everything with shows. Uh, even if there is an influx, uh, you if the show is well received, you often do see new highs within the show. We saw that with most of the shows earlier this year. Hawkeye, not quite as much. I, I agree like that one. It seems like, you know, it, it's kind of flattened. Um, but uh, with shows, I think it's it's probably again I, I I would wait until I would I would wait until after or buy it early because if if at least if you think the show is going to be good, uh, because 
we we have seen that is one big difference we have seen with shows like as they're well received because you have multiple weeks mm -hmm. i think of people getting excited about something uh, you'll see increased prices during the show so not necessarily the, i think the best time to buy it because i mean you see the people get those big sales during those time periods so yeah. it's not doesn't mean that just because there's a lot of them that you're going to get a deal yeah do you think well, the, the fact that some of the shows are, are more fresh starts you know they're not necessarily characters we've had as much experience with i mean one division you had a little bit of that hawkeye of course but it, it seems like maybe the the relative newness of some of that when you get outside of the the a tier characters the b tier characters it all those c d e f however far down you want to go um all these fresh faces hit and it, it gives the collectors the market um a, a new place to look i think yeah i mean i like i i would always i was always watching the uh uh, the the recap videos that like very Gary and the pressable defects and those they're they're fun mm -hmm. to watch. I, I like seeing yeah. their you know their spec recommendations. I mm -hmm. it's not usually something I buy, but I enjoy watching it. And I'm sure other people do watch it and make purchases off of that. You mm -hmm. I mean like I remember when uh, the Dark Hold was announced. I had a Marvel Spotlight yeah. four, four four for sale, and it's like it sold at like three a.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like oh, oh yeah. somebody must have watched that episode. You know, so yep. I mean that that definitely happens. Well, before I jump into this slide, just got to give another shout out to Steven here with another $10 super chat. I'm the proud owner of a $16,800 9.8 off white to white special edition 15 high record holder. That's I awesome. could have bought two of them for this price today. Stupid comic link auction. <laughs> well, dude, Steven, I feel your pain on this one, but hey, you only lost money if you sell. That's, that's, that's the, right. Only, that's the one thing I got to say about you. And like Ryan in your spreadsheet, Rob, you can still have that as a 16,000. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and, but, 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 like, no, it, but jokes aside too, it, like Ryan was saying, like Rob was saying, I mean, like Sean, dude, like next movie, yeah. I mean, you're probably going to be pushing those prices again. I wouldn't yeah, be, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Worried. Yeah. Well, and let's look what this book's got going for it. There's 115 9.8s. It's a black background cover of a book that nobody cared about for a long time. So there's probably not a lot more nine, eight candidates floating in the ether out there. No. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he's well positioned. He's not going to make money today. He's not going to make money tomorrow, but he can make money on that book eventually. Yeah. All right. We'll jump into this slide. Newbie. I got to start with you. You, 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 dirt, you dirty, dirty. He's implying flipper. something. <laughs> dirty, dirty flipper. Uh, why is spec a dirty word and why are you not a real collector if you are a speculator? I, I don't know either. I mean, I think uh, the beauty of comics is you can be in it for so many reasons, right? Whether it be character, whether it be art, whether it be a run collector, a silver, you know, and a single issue, uh, you know, variants, right? Whatever the case may be, you, you know, it, it's. It's like if I said to Ryan, Ryan, what's your favorite color? And he said yellow. And I was like, okay, well, mine's blue and blue's better. Why is blue better than yellow? Right? Like, it's just one of those conversations. That it's like, why? I always, always talk about this when, you know, people say this is like, if I go to Walmart and I see that they have iPhones for a hundred dollars and it says, you know, limit five, I'm going to get five. But at the same time, I'm going to call my dad and I'm going to call my mom and I'm going to call my buddies and say, Hey, come on over. I don't need five phones, but I I'm going to make money in order to help me succeed and same with comics right i mean if you can find comics to help you know pay for the hobby itself why wouldn't you right it's just investing in it you know i have a book and then i sell it someone gets that book but then i get money to actually put it towards a bigger book you know like it's just a circle and i i, I don't see the problem with it i see the problem when if i was the only one that had the books and i'm selling them at like a thousand dollars yeah maybe but yeah I don't do that. Um, and spec, I mean, it's it's similar to, you know, I'm a big sports guy. At the end of sports seasons, man, I really wish that this player goes to my team. Oh, I, I think this player is going to go to that team. If that player doesn't go to that team, I mean, you know, are we really like freaking out or, you know, posting all these hate videos? And, you know, like it's just it's supposed Some to be people fun. Do. Yeah. yeah, no, and 100 percent. And I just don't give those people my attention. But like spec is supposed to be fun. You know what I mean? And uh I yeah. don't know. It's it's fun. Rob, yeah. let me let me bring you in this one. Is is there that sentiment in the card market? Is there like a subset of people who kind of feel like, oh, like these new 
sports card collectors aren't purists. Oh, for sure. Uh, okay. I don't know that it's extreme as what I see on the comic book side of things, but there's definitely a collector investor uh, tug of war on the sports card side of things. I do think it's more extreme on the comic book side. And I, it just always, I find it amusing that like, you know, whether it's sports cards, comics, whatever, the fact that people take offense that you're leveraging your knowledge about whatever it is to make money on that thing, to then use that money to buy the things that you really want. I don't understand why people get mad at that. Like, why yeah. wouldn't you want to do that? Like yeah. most people are funding the hobby. We say all the time in sports cards and you guys do in t- too in comic books, you know, fund the hobby with the hobby. Yeah. You know, not everyone has uh, a bunch of ex- expendable income coming in from their day job. We all have bills that we have to pay, but if I could side hustle my way into a Hulk 181, you're, you're damn right. I'm going to do it. Like, why, why wouldn't I do that? You know, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. This, the collector versus investor, flipper versus, you know, whatever, speculator versus this. The amount of hate people get because all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, you sold a comic book. You're the most evilest person in the world. You should never do this is baffling. It's absolutely baffling to me, whether it's on the sports card side or the comic book. You know, side. and it's crazy too, because like there's a lot of people who sell. Uh, there's a local guy to me. Uh, sometimes we go, you know, hunting together. Sometimes we go. And uh, I remember, and this was funny. I was going to say it earlier when we were talking about it, but like when Loki or yeah, when Loki show happened episode, I can't remember how many episodes there were, but like just before they announced Kang or Immortus or whoever you want to say, we found like two long boxes of like Avengers 269, 267, the Alex Ross cover. And we picked them up for a dollar. And you know, they were going for like 50. We put them up, you know, for like 35, you know, but then that those books got me to a book that I wanted. And the thing that people don't realize too, is like, if they, they don't do it, like somebody else will, like somebody else will come in and be like, Oh shoot, I can make money. You know, like it's just that mentality. It's just that they don't have a YouTube channel. They don't have social media, you know, because people sell all the time. Like it, it's yeah. the, the fact that it's just like, it's just newbie and pressable defects doing spec. I mean, that's that's just crazy. Like, there's there's yeah. so many more people, right? So, yeah. what, what what about you, Ryan? How how do you sleep at night knowing that you <laughs> you you buy a pile of money you, you, no. you buy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you you buy the dips and you sell the highs? I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just like the the way the way I look at it is it's just it's it's something that that I enjoy and it's something that I can also use as a another form of income mm-hmm. you know i mean it's like I, I i used to do like more stock stuff i don't really enjoy that but comics is it's fun it's really fun opening yeah. those boxes seeing those mm-hmm. cool books mm-hmm. you know even if i only have them for a little bit like having uh having certain books just you know being able to hold them you know some really old keys and, and that kind of thing it's just it's a lot more fun than, than buying yeah. and selling stocks uh you know but like uh, but the other thing is it's really like I mean, you can see like the stuff behind me. You, you do keep things as well. <laughs> you know? I was gonna yeah, say yeah. that. It's right? not I like said, you know. It's not like I'm just us. like selling everything. Yeah. Um, but but the way the one of the ways I look at it, the reason I think it's always so surprising that people give so much hate out there for for it's like for individuals that sell books. It's like, do you go into your LCS and yell at the owner <laughs> for charging more for like they bought a collection for like you know it's like ten cents a book and they're selling them for however much? Are you yelling at the owner for doing that? No. You know, it's right, like, so, right. so, and I, I've actually, I've said that to someone on eBay when they messaged me and I, I was like, I was like, if you're not talking to your LCS owner like this, you probably shouldn't be talking to me like this. So yeah. you know, to me, that's just, a, a, one of the hilarious things is the, a lot of times the people that are very, you know, on the collector side of things are the first ones to say, support your local LCS Yeah, out of one side of their mouth and on the other side of their mouth, they're going, look at the evil flipper over here. But you you realize your local LCS is the OG original flipper, right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> we all understand that, right? And and the people that are usually complaining the most are the ones that are on the opposite side, going, "Oh no, no, no! How dare you buy bags and boards on Amazon? You need to buy them from your LCS." Like, yeah, yeah. I just don't like LCS? the real the the real collector thing. That that's that's the one thing that bugs Yay, me. Gatekeeping. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, well, it's okay. you know, like because <laughs> I spec does not mean I'm not a real collector. Like yeah. I, I collect Fantastic Four, I collect Avengers, you know, I collect Iron Man. Those are my thing. Like obviously, like Ryan said, if you look behind, you know, and all of us have comics or the things that we like. Like clearly, I'm a collector, right? But I, I just hate when oh you spec, so you're not a real collector. It's like 
Oh, okay. I yeah. Well, I think I, even I to what <laughs> yeah, and to what Rob was saying is like you know, I mean, I think that yeah, having the hobby pay for itself and it's just like it gives people an opportunity to work their way up to a book. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the most like sort of charitable version of what maybe a speculator would be. Um, and I can understand why maybe there's people that are like upset about that part of the hobby, but like also too, like there's a lot of people who just started collecting and like, I get a lot of people where it's like, oh man, like, oh, you should have bought, like, you should have already invested in Hulk 181, like 10 years ago. And it's like, well, dude, like what if this person just started collecting last year? Like, you exactly. know, they, they're, they're have to, they have to start somewhere. And if you, they want this opportunity to work their way through collecting, I don't see what the problem with that is. Well, because I'm, I'm in a similar situation to Rob. Like he had mentioned he only got back into cards like in like 2018 and comics more recently. Like I got back into comics in 2019. You know, it's only been like three years or so. I mean, I, I tend to dive into things pretty, pretty deep. Yeah. Uh, but but still, like it's. I, I couldn't buy, you know, when I, when I see people talking about, you know, how they bought their amazing fantasy 15 for a thousand bucks, I'm just like, I couldn't do that. <laughs> like I didn't, you know, I never had the opportunity to do something like that. So it's like, I pay the prices that they are now. Yeah. I was pretty happy at 3,600. <laughs> Someone mentioned it in the comments. I, I think a lot of what some of it is like the true collector stuff or whatever you want to call it is. I do think there's an aspect or a certain section of people that can't keep up with the fast moving nature of the market and don't like the idea that all of a sudden they're priced out of a hobby mm -hmm. that they've been invested in for a long time. Um, sure. And I think that does affect people. And I think that's not, that is a legitimate concern. There are people that, you know, they don't want to flip or maybe they don't have time to flip or they don't have, you know, the, the ability or whatever the, it is to, to use the hobby to fund the hobby. So before whatever side money they had to invest in the comic books or whatever was enough to cover it. And then all of a sudden it's not anymore. And in a market like this and same with sports cards, it was like a light switch. It happened fast. Yeah. But and, and I always use the comparison of it's like, um, you know, when people complain that their niche band that they've been following for five years all of a sudden gets on the main radio station and they get pissed yeah. off about it. Yeah. Um, I, I and this will be my last my last point. Um, because you know I pay my taxes, so I have an opinion. But uh, you know, like Ultra <laughs> says in the comment, right? That's always that's my one my saying. Those are you Canadian know. taxes, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know there. And sometimes like I, I hear it from uh, like when on new comic book day, when things come out and like there's some books. So like, you know, this week it was Thor 20. Last week it was timeless number one with Miss Minutes on it. And people get mad at you when you post like a picture with like four or five of them. And I, I don't get that. Like, you know, and that's still like spec, I guess. And, but people still hate that. But it's like we have so many outlets, whether it be previews, League of Comics, you know, certain YouTube channels, certain people talking about books. You have this information in front of you you have it ahead of when it's coming out you have the same opportunity as everybody to order it you have pull boxes and people are always getting mad being like well you know you took them all and i couldn't i'm like dude i'm in canada you're in california we are not going to the same local shop it, it's right. not happening right so and i think people sometimes get mad because they see somebody oh you got five copies i didn't get any do you have yeah. a pull box yeah did did you know this book was coming out yeah I don't know what to say after that. It's like, you know what I mean? So sometimes I think people just get mad. You know, unfortunately, there's people that don't like how you do things. And it's in everything. It's in music. It's in fashion. It's in sports. You know, it it, it is what it is. You're not going to get along with everybody's opinion. You have your own. And that's fine. But don't, you know, the problem I have is when, well, you're not really in this because I like it. Clearly, you know, I'm going to be 35 and I've got an Iron Man poster and comic books, right? Like, clearly, I am a fan. I love this <laughs> stuff. So, you know. Yeah. See, sure, I'll can, let you. I'll let you get the last word before we move okay. on to the next thing here. Yeah, I can argue uh, the opposite side of that. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've worked at an LCS. I'm also from an area where there's not a lot of access to comics, so I almost feel like the people that come in and and there's been a guy locally that's that's done this for a while around here. He'll come in whatever the hot new book is, you know, that everybody's talking up that that gets released. He'll buy the whole damn stack off the wall. And basically, I don't know if he doesn't have a job. He just takes Wednesdays off or whatever it is. But he's always at every store. And naturally, they're all staggered here. So he's at every store as soon as they open. He immediately buys them all out. Damn. Yeah, I know. At that point, I feel like it's incumbent on the LCS yeah. to protect their, cust their regular customer. You sure. know, 
So if we've only got three copies, five copies of something on the wall, I can't let you buy a hundred percent, eighty percent of yep. this book. And 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 that's just where I feel like it, it's it needs to be a symbiotic relationship. You know, the yep. LCS obviously they've got to make their money, but they've also got to keep their customers happy. So if you come in every single week to pick up your books right, you know, Wednesday and everything's gone constantly, you're going to go someplace else. You're going to change your yeah. hobbies and that's not good for the, the, uh, the LCS. Now, yeah. as far as the dirty flippers, all that, I've rarely seen somebody walk up to my booth when I'm set up at a convention that cusses me out for being there selling comics. Right. You know, they're always happy. You said rarely though. So has it happened? Yeah. Uh, I'm, if you guys get to know me, I anger people fairly easily what? somehow. No. Apparently I come from a long line of assholes or something. I don't know. Um, but generally, you know, people are happy to have the opportunity to buy these things because the way I approach it is, you know, we don't ever really own these things. We just kind of get to take care of them for a little while yeah. until we get to send them on to somebody else. Because eventually we're all going to be in the dirt and somebody else is going to own all of our shit. That's just that's the true. way it's going to happen. That's why you have them buried with it. Like that, that is something that's <laughs> been funeral fun. Pyre, is like yeah. Yeah. See, seeing books that I've sold to someone at some point pop up on Instagram on like uh -huh. somebody else that I didn't even sell it to. And I'm like, Oh, I reckon yeah. like once you get yeah. to like older books, you recognize your books. Yeah. yeah. That's you're exactly. like, Oh, that is that copy. Exactly. So I, I live this life. I mean, I started out where I got back into comics in 2005 when I was in college. I started out with three short boxes in the closet. Now I, I can't even tell you how much I've got. And it's literally all been built, you know, one purchase at a time and it just snowballed. And then it gets to the point where you start buying collections. You just start selling stuff to get more stuff. And it's, it's just a awesome, beautiful thing. So the power of trading things you've found at a good price or that have gone up in price for something else that you want while at the same time satisfying somebody else, making them happy by giving them something they want. That's what the community was built upon. We've just got angry about it somewhere. Right. right. You know, and I think part of that, and I'm, I'll pretend to be the old man uh, comic guy here. Um, it's, there used to be more camaraderie about it. I, I knew a guy who had literally been buying and selling comics since 1961. He needed to make money. He wanted to make money, but he looked at it as if I make what I need to make, I also want to make sure that you get a good price on it because keeping the person interested in the books, interested in the hobby was more important to him than getting that very last red penny out of the yeah. buyer. Right. So. Right. That's, well, I mean, that's very, definitely true. I've, I've learned that's something I picked up. I, I used to always watch American pickers all the time. Same. And it, yeah. it's something that they've said where it's like, you, you can't in, 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 businesses or, or hobbies like this you can't try to get that end of the rainbow you, you know it's mm -hmm. like you if you if you have a target on kind of some type of, of gain or whatever for a book if you get that just let it go and then yep. and move on yeah well very well said uh, i think we covered that topic very well and hopefully maybe change some hearts and minds to those who are against flipping but we're on a mission to civilize Moving into 2022, we're going from one controversial topic to another. We got to talk about yeah. CGC price increases, guys. CGC price increases. We were in the backstage before the show even began, and we were already talking about CGC prices increases. Uh, very, very hot topic. So uh, you can see right there, that's kind of the slide that, of where they have gone up. Um, I'll kind of throw out the three questions I have in the slide and kind of let you guys uh, answer it, but you know, is this business as usual? Who cares? It's just, okay. Yeah. We're all going to huff and puff and whatever. We're just going to send in our books tomorrow to CGC. Uh, will CBCS gain some market share as a result of this? I saw a lot of people, uh, posting on Instagram being very angry towards CGC and saying that they're going to go full CBCS, or is this going to cause, you know, a raw book rise, like screw graded comic books. I'm buying that raw now, Rob, 
I got to start with you because you were here not too <laughs> long ago. You, Mr. You know, PSA, PSA raised their prices. A lot of people were uh, pounding their fists. And one of the question, what, what questions was, was, you know, is, is a company like Beckett going to really get market share? And I guess maybe start us, start the conversation by kind of sharing what you felt like happened with, with PSA. Yeah. So what I found over the last two years is the, the sports card market and the comic book market have moved in tandem with each other with the sports card market kind of breaking the ice. And then the same trials and tribulations that we've gone through on that side, you guys go through like three months behind us and the mm -hmm. same crazy spikes and peaks and all this nonsense. Same thing. You guys are like a month or two behind us for whatever reason. It just seems to work that way. Same thing. We had massive grading backlogs and all of a sudden you guys had them and you know, it, it just kind of works this way. And for those not familiar on the sports card side of things, PSA is, is our CGC. They are the number one. They sell for the most. They're the most well-respected. Of course, there's grading wars, depending on what camp you fall into. But they did the same thing the last couple of, last year or so. They raised prices multiple times. Uh, they Part of it was the control of backlog. I'm sure part of it was inflation. I'm sure part of it was they just wanted to charge more for their services because they're a business. And... What they quickly found, the main reason that they cited was to help reduce the amount of cards coming into their backlog. And what they quickly found was is that raising the price wasn't enough. Everyone just still kept sending them stuff and in some case sent them more things. Um, it's a good problem. What to have. they ended up having to do is actually eliminate the lower tiers completely. Up until the last month, you could not submit a card to PSA for less than $150. And they've now opened up the $100 tier. And we're probably yeah, six crazy. months away from them opening up the $50 tier. So imagine, uh, for to compare that to CGC, imagine everything on that list went away except Express. That's what PSA did for nine months. Nothing changed. Well, a, a, a very tiny bit changed in the grading company sphere. Nine months later, even after shutting, basically shutting down and not taking submissions, guess what? PSA is still the one people want to use the most. It's still the one that resales for the most, even with them being completely closed. Some smaller companies gained a little bit of ground. What actually happened in some cases was, is PSA doing that actually screwed over the smaller companies because they weren't set up to handle all of a sudden everyone sending them their inventory. Mm -hmm. Then they got massive backlogs and people got pissed off at them. So to quickly answer your questions there, business as usual, yes. Will CBCS gain market share? No. Will raw books rise? Probably not. I honestly think this is status quo. Um, I was I mentioned it earlier. I was talking about this very topic on Reggie Collects last night. I think this is one of the most overblown things I've ever seen. The price increase is minuscule. CGC adds tremendous value to your books, and you're complaining over a 2 to $3 increase. Uh, I understand they have massive backlogs. I understand it could be extremely frustrating, but every grading company is like that. And CGC is also the most liquid on the secondary market. And, and that's a factor as well. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just, to make a long story short, I honestly think this is a bunch of people, you know, with pitchforks and torches in the air, just kind of all standing around. And in about a month, they're all going to be looking at each other like, Wait, what were we mad at? And then it's just going to be business as usual again. That's, to be right. That's what happened with the first price thing, too. Everybody right. was like mad for like a week and made all their videos. And then it was like, all right, time to send my books. Where well, are you and, going? And, so, and some people did send a CBCS, but then CBCS got a backlog and then they and then CBCS yeah. raised their price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, they're like, oh, CBCS, they shouldn't have raised their price when they have a backlog. The same stuff. They said about CGC. I think it just depends. So, and like we were talking in the backstage, I think it just depends on what you want with the book. Like, do you want a book slab because it's going to stay in your PC? 100%. Do whatever. You know, PGX, CBC, whatever. But if you're looking at it from like, is it an investment book? Or are you planning to flip it? Uh, which from the last topic, there shouldn't be anybody in here that's a dirty flipper, right? Except me. Right. Um, then, you know, why do you need CGC, right? So I, I think it just depends on what you want with the book. But like Rob said, CGC in the secondary market holds more value you can put a book same grade cgc versus cbcs and the cgc is still going to sell more it just it always is yeah and sell faster probably yeah 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. now one thing ryan's i do have, oh god to ryan's point really say, quick. one thing i do have a comment on was that uh you had made a comment about raw books and i'll say for modern 
yes, that's true. That that having it graded adds a significant amount of value. But I, I've noticed in raw books for like Silver Age and and kind of like older books, raw prices have come in line with You're right. graded prices. Yeah. You're right because I do buy a lot of raw stuff, and I don't and I look for those like three O's, four O's, five O's, and I see a lot of people charging them at the FMV of it yeah. being graded. That's a big thing in the seller market. You've got a lot of sellers that are selling or putting raw price or graded prices on raw books. And and I I think, I mean, a big part of it is like you you look at it and you go, well, because it used to be, it's like you would get a book graded and it's like it would double in price. And it's like, well, why should I sell a book, you know, to someone and then have it, you know, double in price just from them spending 30 or 40 bucks, like back when value tier existed, uh, you know, 30 or 40 bucks on, on getting, on getting the book graded. And so that's why usually when I'm, I mean, I, I, when I'm buying books, I, I, I buy them at those types of prices now too. I, I buy them and I just, when I uh, am pricing a, a raw book, I'm just backing out grading fees. That, that's right. really all I'm doing. Cause I, I'm just, I've noticed that the prices are, are selling about the same as graded. So, mm-hmm. it, you know, it is what it is. And, and I think, Part of the reason is is that the only really accurate sources of sale of, of uh, pricing data are for graded books. You know, yeah, so yeah. people are going to uh, GPA, go collect cover price. The, you know, those places, and that's the pricing is graded. Listen, yeah. it's it's a business. You know, as the first question says, business as usual. Yeah, inflation. It, you know, economics. You know, it, it's how we have these these conversations of hey, you know, when you talk to your grandfather you know, bread was a a dime and gas was a nickel or, you know, a quarter, whatever the case may be. That's what happens over time. Um, And it's going to continue to happen. And I think the pitchforks came with, you know, the two biggest things that I got from people that were like complaining was, man, how could they do this in a a six to eight month uh, period followed by it's a pandemic. It's like, okay, but you're still yeah. buying these like comics and doing it. Like if it's a pandemic and you're that worried, why are you spending money on comics? Yeah, it's, anyway? a, it's a luxury. <laughs> and that's why right? I think it's kind of crazy to complain about it. You know, it's yeah. like, this isn't, mm-hmm. this isn't, you know, food or, or rent or electricity yeah. or whatever, you know, it, the comic books are a luxury. Great. It's like Rob is said too. Like if you actually look at the numbers, I mean, it's two to $5 max. That's small on the inflate, you know, like where inflation is like, that's, that's still small. Yeah. Yeah, Drew, let, my, Drew, my grading let, went from twenty five dollars a card to a hundred dollars a card practically overnight. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna yeah. freak out about a two dollar <laughs> yeah. change. Well, at all. And, and well, what Drew, it does Drew, is let it, me oh, go ahead. Let, let me just pull in Drew real quick right here because you know not to derail where you guys were, were talking it, but you know Drew, you just did that CBCS unboxing mm-hmm. of, a, yeah. of a bunch of great books. Yeah. And would you? Well, let, let's just say you're that person, right? You're like you mm-hmm. got some books in your PC. You're about to send them in, but you know you mm-hmm. never know. I might sell a book one day. Yep. Are are you? Does this price make you more inclined to send it to CBCS just for you? Um, you know, I've been a, a fan of CBCS for a while. Um, my mileage is different. I don't buy and sell in a lot of the same arenas that you know uh, Rob and Ryan do. I'm selling, you know, business you know, like person to person. Everybody's right there in front of me or, you know, face to face. I price CBCS books exactly like CGC books. Every dealer that I know that I'm friends with, that I set up next to at these shows, all do the same thing. At an auction, absolutely, CGC is going to pull more. At a show where you're sitting there, you've got the books in your hand, every once in a while you'll find the CGC fan or purist that just does not want a CBCS book. But most of the time people are just buying the book because they want the book. We also yeah. don't tend to be out here, you know, in the, in the Midwest, um, small to medium shows selling nine eights of, you know, major blue chip keys and stuff like that. Most of what we sell would be, you know, nine twos, nine fours, some nine eights, but most books that you see at these shows are four figure books at the most, you know, you're not cracking into the five and six figures for, for a lot of what we sell. The reason I personally have gone with CBCS is because I have used their pressing service uh, just for books. I don't trust myself to press. I've gotten a lot better results from their in-house pressing than I have from CCS. Uh, the last order I sent to CCS to be pressed, I should have just sat a brick on top of my books and sent them in because <laughs> it was terrible. Oh, um, so CBCS, I don't think is going to gain any market share out of this. I, they've already picked up 
a bit of volume and are struggling to get through it. I've had three orders there over the course of the last eight months, and there were some issues, some delays, um, but in the end, everything got back to me safe and it's in the new case and it looks great. So I'm happy with it. Right. Um, so I, I don't see these price increases as being a huge thing other than the fact that just nothing is getting cheaper right now. Nothing's staying the same. I think it's just one more area where we're seeing the dollar go a shorter distance. And it's yeah. just like, God damn, now I got to pay more to have my comics graded too. Yeah. Listen, Ryan, you, you guys, have like, I don't know if you guys have Tim Hortons, but Tim Hortons up here in Canada is like Timmy's. Massive. Timmy's, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think it was like two years ago, they, they made this like upgrade and it was like a quarter mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. lost their freaking mind. Okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> three, like they were talking about it on Ellen. Guess what? There's still people that are buying Timmy's. They're still getting three to four copies a day. They're still, like, that is the go-to. Every mm -hmm. time I go to Canada, it's like I, I always yeah, go to Tim Hortons. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll put it on the list. <laughs> well, right, Ryan, I kind of before I threw it to Drew, did you did you have like a little point you wanted to chime back in on before we kind of maybe move on to the next topic? Uh, I said Ryan or Rob. Rob sorry, oh, I, said, I said I said Ryan, Ryan, oh my or God. Rob, or Rob, either one. I'll let Ryan go first. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't I don't really remember other than just the fact that that I'm I. I wasn't surprised to see this. I mean, once, especially once they got, they got purchased, I was like, we should probably expect to see yearly price increases. I mean, I think that's going to be pretty normal. It's going to be a small amount. Um, I mean, the reason uh, someone else had commented on, on Instagram, I remember, and they thought maybe they would see like another huge influx from this. And I was like, no, I mean like $5, I don't think is going to cause a huge influx. The reason the last one did was because they eliminated that value tier. And yeah. so you had, you technically had, you actually had more like a jump from like 30 to 70 or 75 or whatever it was. So it was a pretty significant price increase. Whereas with this, I mean, five bucks, I mean, when you're talking about, you know, books that are, if, if you're going for like an, you know, the, uh, the standard tier, so a book that's like a thousand, you're not going to be rushing to submit, uh, you know, your books for, for $5. Right. And let's be honest, if we all want to be outraged about something, let's be outraged about the price of bags and boards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a couple Can more I things get... I want to toss out. Yeah, Rob, go ahead. Um, before we move on to the next thing. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people in the comments saying about like, well, why are, you know, they've raised prices twice already. Why aren't turnaround times getting better? This, that, and the other thing. I mean, look around you. I, I could not imagine owning a massive business like this and trying to scale it in the time that we're living in right now, not to use the pandemic as an excuse, but like, my daily just going to Chipotle to get lunch is drastically affected from all this because they can't find enough people yep. just to make some That's tacos. Yeah. And and you're trying to say, oh yeah, CGC, just staff up and and you know get these trusted people in there to look over my books and assign a grade to them overnight like that when the most base level industries can't find people to come in to do work right now. Like, how do you expect a company like that to actually get people in the door, train them correctly, which takes time? And then deal with COVID protocols, actually retaining employees and all that to just happen overnight. That's such a well, slow and, process. And look at what they have to do, like page counts. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that, that is not a fun job. No. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could not imagine sitting there flipping through books all day. As, as fun as that might sound, I bet you that gets old after the end of about the second. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> and yeah. here's a terrifying hypothetical. What happens when they can no longer source their inner and outer wells? What if supply chain issues? And, yeah, and you know, that, that, the that could be part production of production problems as well, right? Yeah, just yeah. to cover that stuff. To to me, there's a, one last quick comment, and then a, a quick question. I almost want to kind of turn around back on you guys. I think the only thing more overblown than the CGC price increase is the new tax law in the United States. I saw comments on that earlier. I think oh, that yeah. is welcome the to most the party, boys. Free tax <laughs> thing in the world uh, uh, to compare with the CGC price increase. And the thing I kind of want to flip back to you guys, I don't, if I if I derail you, Mickey, feel free to, to move along. Do you think CGC should go the path of PSA for at least a certain amount of time period? Because how else are they going to yeah. get caught up on their backlog? If yeah. they don't stop incoming submissions, the backlog is going to keep getting larger. It's not getting smaller. My so you problem. Think, think they should go and say, OK, you know what? Modern economy and standard, we're we're just calling a timeout for a few months. Uh, you know, if you still want to send high end stuff to us, that's fine. 
but we want to actually focus on getting this backlog knocked out and wearing this down and then we'll open back up again. Do you guys think that's even feasible or is that no. like crazy? I want to hear what you guys have to say. Cause you guys would be saying something smarter than I would, but like to me, like the logic in that is like Thanos snapping half of existence out of, you know, <laughs> the universe, but like, you know, 65 years from now, everyone's going to repopulate or it's going to get, it's going to get up to the mm -hmm. population again. So like, I don't know if that's the solution that makes sense. Ryan, my, Ryan heard me say this story and, uh, you know, I, I recognize some people in the chat. Um, big shout outs to the chat, by the way. You guys are oh, big shout outs to the great. chat. Yeah. The chat's yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, but I, I've said this uh, a few times, this story where there is a guy, a local guy who, um, you know, every Wednesday when new comic books come, he grabs them, looks at them, pays the guy, pushes them back because they send them off to CGC. And he's got, you know, whether they be nothing books or big books, right? But he's sending pretty much everything that he gets on a Wednesday, which is like a stack like that, maybe sometimes bigger, off to CGC. So you do have a lot of these books that I, I shouldn't say are nothing books because books, you know, are we everybody collects differently, right? So if that's the way that person wants to, and if there's one, there's got to be more. But I do think that they need to put a stop. And here's why uh me and ryan are good friends with uh chris at van well so is uh swag uh with vancouver comic junkie i mean yeah he's got books that haven't even been processed yet from like july now we all don't just send i mean most of us don't just send a book to cgc the way it is we clean it we press it we do all those tricks but after a while i mean if it's just sitting there i mean you're not going to get the grade. So, I mean, if I'm spending money on these other services to make sure that my investment or my item is going to be at the top condition and it's just sitting in a factory. And I mean, people sometimes laugh at this when I say this, but I also say, you know, like the humidity in Florida and, you know, that like it's different, right? Like I'm a, up in mm -hmm. Canada, you yeah. know, elevate like all that stuff to paper affects things. So sometimes, you know, I, I do think that they need to come out and say, Hey, let's stop. Let's just get everything out and then, you know, kind of go. I, I think it would help or maybe just, you know, let us know. Hey, you know what, guys, we're not we're not going to be doing stuff right now. Something. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ryan or Drew, do you have thoughts on what Rob had asked? Go ahead, Ryan. Uh, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> CGC, CGC cut out lower tier submissions for a while to get oh, caught up. Yes. In the like they just froze, froze those submissions. Uh, I, the, the reason I don't think they will is because of how big of a business that is for uh, a, a lot of a lot of artists. You know, there are a lot there are a lot of artists that will do these like massive, you know, pre screen, you know, or, or they'll pre sell nine eights, you know, th and they'll send that they'll have thousands of them sent at a time. And I, I don't know if they'll want to to one, you know, potentially burn that that bridge with with that artist because maybe that person then goes okay i'm going to cbcs now hmm. or, or or maybe it's just like somebody else in the comment mentions like why would they want to lose out on all that revenue you know i mean that that's that's really what's going to be yeah. they're, they're losing a lot of money potentially when, when they it make was, that decision it was pretty noble of psa to to do what they did yeah i, mm -hmm. I feel like i mean it's pretty respectable yeah. I see a lot of people in the comments saying, why would they ever do that? Why, that will never work. They, they leave the door open for other competition to come up. And my answer to that would be, is the biggest sports card grader in the world did it. And it turned out just fine for them. Mm -hmm. Like they're six months away, probably from completely clearing their backlog. They've slowly started to open up new submission tiers. And when they open back up, the running joke I've been making is that there'll be a fully operational Death Star and they'll probably smash everybody else because mm -hmm. they've scaled up. They've used this time wisely, mm -hmm. invested the money into infrastructure. And when they open back up fully operational again, they'll probably be able to outprice everybody else and outprocess everybody else because of the, the year plus that they've done in doing that. And it really hasn't hurt them at all, uh, in my opinion, maybe, maybe a little tiny bit, but not noticeably. It's so like when one, Cartman one got that, a, a theme park in South Park. Yeah. One, one area that might be a little different with cards versus comics is I feel like, so, and this is again, going with, with not moderns, but a little older is I get the impression that with cards, you, you add significantly more value with grading because it's, it's so tight on whether it's a nine or a nine, five or a 10, uh, you know, and there's such huge price differences within those very small margins. Whereas with comics, uh, I mean, I know I saw some people in the chat saying, you know, they don't trust people's grading and that kind of thing. Um, but as long as you have enough experience, you can, you know, you can learn to grade books. You, you, even if somebody says something is a six, you're like, no, that's a four or five, you know, you, know, you can, yeah. you can figure that stuff out and you can pay the price accordingly. 
And so I, I think that's something where maybe they would fear that it would push more people to just like, it would grow the raw market even more. Now, granted, the raw market is huge compared to the graded market. Um, I remember uh, uh, this being talked about before is that there, there's a, the, the number of collectors, and it's probably changed a little in the last year, but the number of collectors that owned raw or graded books is actually relatively small. Uh, yeah. the, 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 cause I think, uh, uh, like those are, those are your first graded books, aren't they? On the uh, swag on the top of your, uh, Oh yeah. Shelf? These like, like, you, yeah, you yeah, these own, are... yeah. You didn't own graded nah. books until this, this year. Yeah. I was not big into, I'm not against it. It just was like, it's just cheaper to buy raw. So why wouldn't I do He's that? been bit by the right. bug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all, all CGC by the end of next year. Um, so, sure. Let me get, let me get if, you with the last, Oh, yeah, yeah. EGC put a press uh, release out and said we're cutting all all tiers off, you know, express and lower or whatever. Do you think CBCS, do they wake up the next morning like, oh, my God, this is the best thing ever? Or do they wake up and go, no. oh, I think shit. it's doomsday. I think it's well, doomsday. Well, they, I mean, they already yeah. had that yeah. tech. I mean, they mm -hmm. went from like a, a one week delay or one week or two week turnaround time to I think they're up at they're like CGC. You know, they're multiple months. Um, mm -hmm. So they yeah, they, so, are, they have um, experienced that. From, from a business move from PSA's perspective, it's an interesting angle when you look at it from that that way, because it's almost like, yeah, they kind of screwed themselves, but they also screwed their competition harder because they set themselves mm -hmm. up for this. Yeah. And all of a sudden the dump truck fell on top of their competition and they didn't in some cases they adapted. OK, but in some cases they completely screwed them like they completely screwed over Beckett. Uh, they put a, a quick dink in SGC and then they ended up coming back. Uh, but a lot of the smaller companies were not set up for the increase in volume, and it actually made them look worse in the long run. Yeah, I Let's think from Drew, and then yeah, you, okay. Drew, why don't you get, chime in for this, and then we'll move on to the the next topic. I think to your last question, Rob, it, it would be doomsday because CBCS has had some issues just with balancing the workload. Like you'll have people that have orders from April that haven't been touched yet, but I, I know, and this is all tangential, of course. Um, people who submitted orders the same time I did in August that they're not even checked in yet, or, you know, they're, they're, there's been no movement. It's just, everybody is so buried right now. They've got to dig out. Right. But as far as cutting the actual tears out, I have a love hate relationship with that question. Um, because as a person who doesn't submit modern books, uh, especially not new releases, I get really frustrated when I see special promotions and this is all prior to the, the madness of the last 18 months, special promotions where you send in this many books, will give you, you know, the discount on two day modern push through whatever, you know, the hell they call it. Or we're going to bring in a revolving door of artists for special signings, get your books in now and we'll push all this to the front of the line. And here I am, I've sent, you know, thousands of dollars worth of books and a handful of books down there and they're just sitting on a pile waiting to be checked in looked at moved into the grading room whatever while all of this other stuff is just being shoveled through i get why they do it because while i may send a high ticket order in once or twice a year these people are sending all this stuff in every week every month it's big money for them yeah. So I totally get it. I doubt we'll see them do that. I personally would love it. I think um, to Rob's point, if they could do that, get their legs out from underneath them and just prepare themselves for the onslaught. Once they do get out from underneath this, that would be amazing. I would be the first person in line cheering for their uh, success. Um, just because at some point, somebody has got to do something to fix this. Right. Whether, I do enjoy seeing the internet outrage as well. So yeah, <laughs> well, yeah it'd be fun to see happen. Well, the outrage will definitely be there. We'll see what happens. I don't think CGC is going to be getting rid of their gimmick sort of uh, uh, mm -hmm. CGC signing stuff. It, like you said, it's probably their yeah. bread and butter. They just but make way too much money. But speaking of money, great segue. Drew. Uh -oh. hey, let's, talk about, let's talk about this next thing right here. Before I get into like sort of our you know, last big sort of topic, I really want to dig in. I feel like we got to talk a little bit about this because everywhere I go, everybody talks about what not, what not this, yeah. what not that, what not this. Drew, let's start with you. you. You're about to have a what not sale. Is 2022, I feel like 2021 was like the year of the claim sale. Mm -hmm, and then yeah. is 2022 going to be the year of what not? What's your thoughts on what not? 
Uh, well, shameless self-promotion, brand new whatnot seller, Como Comic Books, coming to you here in the next couple of weeks. Um, but no, I think whatnot really just saw a need and exploited it. I mean, you know, you you take eBay, you take Twitch, you put them in the same room together, and a little magic happens, and out pops whatnot. Right. Um, from the sellers I've talked to that are already on the platform, it's it's a win for the seller um, because the hardest part of doing your Instagram live sales, your Facebook live sales, as I'm sure, you know, Mick from having done yeah. the ones you've done is keeping all of that stuff straight, sending the invoices, checking, make sure the invoices are paid, getting the shipping labels out. They do all that for you. Like as soon as somebody wins a lot, bam, it's charged. They send you the labels. When the auction is done, as soon as the items delivered, you get paid. That's great. What I think it's done is just it's consolidating something that's been out there for a while. Um, it's just so easy to sell on their platform. And in the last three years, we've seen the the friction between the the person, the collector, let's say, who has the book or the toy or the Jordans or whatever it is, the friction between them taking their collection or item to the market has been completely dissipated. Now you don't have to go to a vendor like me or a local comic shop uh, to sell your books. You can do it yourself, which sucks for guys like me because it's a lot harder to buy stuff now, but it's great for the collector that wants to maximize their return if they're willing to put in the work. So so the 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 wave of flippers is coming. Yeah. Think. Oh, I, well, I mean, we're already there. Now, you know, we're just all going to be yeah. in in one spot. Um well, but it, but let, let me let me ask you this sure. with regards to that. Let's switch it around cuz I felt like I mean, shout out to Azores Tigers. He turned me on to a couple whatnotters who do mm -hmm. some selling. Yeah. And I, when I saw some of the books going there, I was like, dude, this is like this is like highway robbery with some of the steals that were being yeah. sold for some of the stuff on there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Ryan, you were talking about liking live auctions and things like that. And I feel like whatnot, if you're, if you're on it and you're looking, you can like, you can definitely get some steals. Like what do you, well, it, why would sellers want to sell a whatnot? Well, and things, like things definitely changed with what is being sold on whatnot from the very beginning to now, because at the beginning, I think people were risking bigger books and you really don't mm -hmm. see that much at all no. anymore. That's it's true. generally That's true. like, it's like $20 and under type books, because mm -hmm. then if you, if it sells for five bucks, you know, even though if you like, like say you're, you're a shop owner, you got them for 10 cents a piece, you're still doing really good, you know? And, and so it's a, it's a method to move a lot of, uh, books over a very short period of time, as long as you, as you have, if you already have a healthy margin on those books, it's a great place to do it. But yeah, I, I remember when whatnot first started, some people were trying to sell some bigger books and they were just, they were getting just destroyed yeah. uh, with, mm -hmm. with those, with those auctions. And so uh, that has definitely changed it. The, it, I mean, people still have their, their like fixed price books that you can buy, you know, mm -hmm. what they'll do for bigger books, but for, for the main auctions, it tends to be, I've just noticed, you know, like, generally $20 and under every once in a while, you'll see like a hundred dollar nine, eight modern slab or something like that. Yeah. Um, but, but that's about it. Right. What, what about you, Rob, is the card market on whatnot? Are they kind of using this platform? What's your sense on it? For sure. Um, you know, whatnot's an interesting thing. There, there's some really good stuff going on over there. I think there's also some, I don't want to say sketchy, but just some interesting things going on over there. I do feel like it's 100% geared towards the lower end side of stuff. Um, I don't want to say junkier stuff, but it's definitely got more of a flea market vibe to it in, mm -hmm. in a lot of stuff. Right. Um, and I see a lot of, especially on the sports card side of things, you see a lot of breakers on there, which is not a thing in comic books because you guys don't have sealed packs. But you also see, which is one thing that I'm not a big fan of, is like people really pushing like, probably not so great mystery box box products and stuff like that. Uh, and to someone's point, like I said it in chat, like, yeah, a lot of people get good deals on there, but you do also see a lot of people pumping up their own stuff to degrees in regards to stuff selling way over than what it should, because people get mm. caught up mm -hmm. in the moment and you don't have, you know, you're running a 15 or 30 second auction. 
you don't have time to check GPA or eBay sold listings. And you'll see the people selling this stuff sometime being like, oh, this is, you know, this 10, 15, $20 book. And like, you go and look and like, they were selling for like 10 bucks or there's actually one listed cheaper on eBay. Yeah. I'm not saying that everyone's like that. And I do think there's a lot for a seller. I think there's a lot of noise to cut through. I think it's very helpful if you are bringing a following with you from something else mm-hmm. to help you rise above that baseline entry level. I think that's the, the hardest part Um for someone cracking that platform is not bringing an established audience with them. Cause there's a lot of noise on there and you, and you could, you could already see it. It's going to become survival of the fittest mm-hmm. the people that do it well are going to do it well. And they are going to go to the top and it's kind of like Twitch almost. Those are the channels or the, the, the streams that are going to get all the views and everyone else is going to get left fighting for the scraps is I think right. eventually what it's going to turn into. Cause yeah. you're seeing bigger and bigger names go over there, you know, right on the up. sports card side of things, it started off very small. And then all of a sudden now you're seeing big players come over there. Like, like that Logan, pa- Logan Paul was followers. on there last week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? I yeah. mean, it's like one yeah, of the biggest more than names in happens, existence. It takes away from the smaller people because if someone logs on and they're not necessarily following a person, the first thing they're going to look at is the one or two rooms that have the most people in it. And that's the ones that they're going to go to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like Drew said with, with Twitch, I mean, that's what happens if you guys the know the game, the game and stuff. Like, yeah, you yeah. go in there and it's like, the recommended top people and that they kind of get all the marks. And I think Rob's really hitting on the, the thing is the social aspect of it. Yeah. There's the, the financial side of it, you know, the transactional side of it, but you've got to be able to entertain, to work the crowd, to engage the audience while you're doing that. Because if, if you don't have those skills, it's, it's probably not going to go well for you. They're going to go find mm-hmm. something else. But I know just from watching some, some, Facebook auctions and Facebook's like claim sales, the the things people sell at the prices they sell in those auctions or sales just blows my mind. It's like, these are dollar bin books. These are $3 bin books. You know, you're selling them for $5. Like they're nothing. I, I think the, the socialization of where people can get in, they can interact with each other and have a good time, drive some of that. So for as much as there are things that sell cheap and people get good deals, I think people can also uh, like, like Rob mentioned, get caught up in the moment and, and wind up overpaying. Right. Right. What about you new? What about you newbie? Do you, have you used whatnot at all? Are you interested in it? There's no what, what not in Canada. Oh my goodness. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know. I've talked to Bolo a few times and he said that uh, Jack Bolo, uh, and he said, yeah, no, it's coming. It's coming. But that, that's also been like eight months now. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. Got it. Well, it is really interesting to me. You know, we won't belabor this topic. I think whatnot is I feel like it's going to be a big deal in 2020. Yeah, I, I think mm-hmm. I think there's going to be a lot of conversations around it um, as compared to eBay. Or I, I put the very Gary up there because, you know, I figured mm-hmm. Matt might still be around. But, you know, I think also, too, I think there's just a lot of places to buy now. You claim sales. with yeah. like the defects they do their their thing and and i think that you know there's going to be a lot of places and whatnot's just going to be another one well I'm like with yeah. that very gary claim sale i mean that i i watched though i've watched some of those for like seven hours straight like they're just they're fun yeah, totally. to just totally. they're entertaining you know mm-hmm. like when he's got like matt on there and and gem and that kind of stuff like it's just it's fun to watch and and that's that's the one thing i think whatnot is missing a little bit is the multiple sellers now i've heard rumors mm. that maybe they're going to have add something like that to their event you can invite guests it's just not very well utilized right now yeah. Yeah. but but that's what i i really enjoy about those youtube live claim sales when it's like you know you got three or four people on there it's just it's just fun yeah absolutely all right well let's go on now to kind of the next little bit of topic this kind of kind of trans transition us into you know sort of the end of the discussion we're going to kind of get into a lightning round sort of thing uh but one thing i'm super interested in you know is is last year in january was like the calm before the storm right like everyone talks about like during the winter months like the comic book market or every market kind of takes some time off you know prices are a little bit lower then you get into january things are starting to to pick up and things like that, you know, with Bo- book of Boba Fett, a lot of star Wars 42 books are, you know, selling a lot. Uh, first show we're going to get is moon Knight, And what I kind of want to ask all you guys is you can see right there. There's the graph. That was the little peak right there. That's April of 2021. And now we're kind of at the end where it is when we get moon Knight, are we beating that number? Are we, are we back up to where, 
April 2021 is. If what, if what do you guys good. think? If it's good, yes. Well, well, well if what it, if what? Let's assume that the trailer comes out and the trailer is lit, like everybody is going crazy over it. What's the release date? Let me be the uninterested guy in the room. It's it's not actually scheduled yet. You can't find it, but oh, okay. it's, it's, it's rumored to come out in February. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, there's no date yet, but yeah, I it's, okay. it's rumored right now to come out in February or March. As you guys can tell, I'm tracking it very yeah. closely. <laughs> but it's heavily speculated that it is going to be the first Marvel property this year. Well, well I'll, I'll say, I bet that low mark right there on that little uh, that dip. That that was me. <laughs> I bought that book. <laughs> nice. I, I can almost guarantee it. That was okay, my in a six point five because this yeah, is yeah. I a, bought a six point is... five a few a few weeks ago <laughs> for fourteen forty, and I so, was like, "This is too cheap." So I let me like, ask you. So are are you going to be able to sell it at that peak when we get the show? Uh, I I don't know if I'll wait. I don't know if I'll, I'll wait until till then. Um, I because I'm I'm a I'm someone who if it's not a book I personally really want, I generally I, I like to 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 move on to, to other books, you know, I'm, I'm, I think that, that I think this is a very good, there, there were two books I thought that were really good to buy right now. One of them was, uh, was this one. The other one is tomb of Dracula 10. I think both those books have, have fallen off and they both have what are, and, and I mean, the little teaser on moon Knight looked like it's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I, I do think that this one's going to come back up. My only concern with moon Knight is that I, I feel like Moon Knight right now, at least, is like a it's like a comic collector's character. You know, it, like the, the, the it's not a, a broadly known character. You know, it, it's not Batman. You know, even though people say he's like the Marvel Batman, it's like it's not it's not a Batman name. Yeah. You know, and, and so I think that's the one thing that's a little risky with it, where there are some big numbers out there for some of those yeah. high higher grade copies like. I used to have a nine two and I really <laughs> kind of wish I still had that nine two mm -hmm. uh, because I mean, it's, it's just, it's, I, I never would have expected the types of numbers that, that people are spending on it. Cause when you start looking at it compared to what other books you can get at those price points um, I, I mean, it's, it's a little tough, but yeah, if it is a, if it is, does if it does prove to be a popular show, then you can potentially bring in other interested people in that property. And then it expands beyond just that, you know, that, that core group of, of collectors kind of yeah. driving the prices on those books. Yeah. Moon Knight is definitely in that like echelon of superhero. That is like, I mean, he's a tier, but like he's right on that edge or maybe yeah. B plus tier kind of like what Iron Man was before Iron Man number one. But Rob, what about you? Like, you know, sort of like bird's eye view of the collector market. Do you care about Moon Knight? Does Moon Knight float your boat? Like, what do you think about a character like this? It, it it doesn't for me, but I've never been, I, I have no personal attachment to the character. You know, I was always, while I'm almost strictly a Marvel person, you know, I always filtered more around the X-Men, Spider-Man, like the X-Men verse of, yeah. of books was always my lane. Like I knew who Moon Knight was, but I was never like, oh, you know, I got to go re read this Moon Knight run. To me, the interesting part about Moon Knight isn't Moon Knight. It's if it, if that show hits it's what else does that bring in? Cause I feel like it's the gateway to a bunch of other stuff. If that yeah. show does extremely well, like, yeah, I think it opens you. the door to a bunch of tangential characters. Mm. I might not necessarily care about a lot of those characters, but I just think it opens it up to a much wider universe of stuff coming in that might, we may not have seen. Uh, I just feel like it's an inflection point of if that show does really well, all of a sudden it opens the door for a bunch of other stuff. If it doesn't do very well, those doors may close or go down different paths. Yeah. That's why I have the canary in the coal mine graphic. Cause to me, it's really interesting. Like if this book hit, if, if this show hits and moon Knight and this book surpasses that peak, are we like, here we go again, you know, for 2021, is this going to be that Disney plus effect? What do you think newbie? What, what, what are you, what are you feeling about this book? I think it's going to explode to be honest with you. I mean, we just got a little teaser and people just went nuts. Um, I think this is just going to be one of those things, though, that like, you know, if you are a true Moon Knight fan, when this show hits, you're going to have a lot of people on that bandwagon. Uh, and that's probably what's going to hurt the book. So, I mean, like if this is your favorite character and you couldn't get the book, I mean, don't be like me and not be able to get your grail um, because it's still affordable. And if you're looking for a flip, like Ryan said, I mean, or like I said, sorry, uh, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I mean, we know the character's coming, but the book is still obtainable. There's still meat on the bone. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I just, I, I like 
to Rob's point, I'm not really attached to this character. I mean, you know, what's a superhero that does parkour in all white? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's just basically yeah. how I viewed it. Um, so I don't know. I mean, if I had the book, it'd be a, a flip to me. I'm, I'm not really attached to the character. So we'll see. Well, Drew, what, what about you? I, I've heard you kind of, you know, say we've, throw, we've touched throw, on throw, this. Throw, throw, some, throw some shade to this book. But like, what, um, what do you think is going to happen here? I've sold every copy I've ever owned and I hate myself for it. Um, <laughs> well, when we first started talking about this, I, I told you I'm waiting for it to die because I've, I've had three of them and none of them were nice enough that I wanted to keep them for my PC. So I'm selfishly hoping it implodes so I can actually pick up a copy um, at a price that won't make me cry uncontrollably for days on end. Um, but it's a good book. It's got, it's got some good things going for it. Um, it like Tom said in, in the chat, it's later in the run, which um you know, I don't know how many people were actually reading Werewolf by Night back in the day. Mm. So there's not a ton of them floating around. Um, I I think it's going to be big and I'm not going to be happy about it. Um, I, I think anybody who got into this book two years ago and just held on it onto it made a very good choice right now. I think it's a terrible buy just because it is so hyped up. Um, so you, so you don't think it's going to hit where it was uh, say last year in April. I hadn't finished yet. Um, oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I, I think it is, but I don't want it to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is, is really where I'm it's coming from. It's a terrible from. buy. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. Um, I, I think there will be, a chance to get this at a better price right now but again if it's good i think that's gonna be a very short-lived moment yeah. moon knight could be iron man i don't know i iron man is accessible to mm. a wider age range like you're not gonna see little kids running around with silver throwing yeah. things you know talking <laughs> yeah. about their multiple personality disorder and being possessed by an egyptian god that's that's yeah. not gonna pass at the dinner table um the, but, the one thing this have i mean oscar isaac you know he, he's like he's like an rdj you know oscar yeah. Contention yeah, he's a big actor name. and you know. you're gonna have some people out there that are upset with how the punisher got handled and they're gonna be looking for a new crazy like badass character to get behind and moon knight could fill that void for them gotcha i, th I think i think to your point drew yeah you're you know the the audience right i mean iron man mm -hmm. you know was was for everybody and i'm not just yeah. saying like i'm an iron man guy but like yeah like moon knight it, it's probably going to be like down a darker path so mm -hmm. yeah are we going to have point. kids yeah like throwing you know all this sh yeah it's just it's a little different i think yeah, yeah. so let, let's transition to this and newbie we can pick back up with you i play that game spec collect forget Ooh. i know that all you guys have played it except for rob one day i'm going to get you on the channel we're going to do that together but i kind of want to do a modified version for this one right. uh, i'm going to show a bunch of books that are going to get hot this year. They're going to get hot, right? And I want to know, as you guys throw out your, say, forget or collect. And actually, we're going to just do forget because it's like, I missed the boat, right? I'm not going to buy this thing. Or it's going to be spec like, hey, there's still meat on the boat, right? So okay. let's, let's put collect aside. We're going to do that. And I really want you to explain, like, because here's what I'm interested in about these books. Is this book right here, starting with Moon Knight, Werewolf by Night 32, are we going to see the same chart a year from now like we did with Eternals or Special Marvel Edition with this thing? Or is this going to be something that is worth still getting right now? So what do you think, newbie? Let's start us off. Like, is oh, it going to fall man. off the cliff after the show? Like, or is this for real? Like, is this for real? Or is this the <laughs> one that everyone wants to flip? This is like Drew said. This is a terrible buy. But um, that's the thing, right? I mean, it, it's out of reach. So for me, if this was my character and this is coming from an Iron Man guy, you don't want to be saying, you know what? I'll get the first appearance later because later turns into crazy amounts of money. Um, it's still relatively affordable, even if I mean, as long as you're not going after like a 9-0, I, th I think you're good. But it depends. I mean, half of me wants to say forget it. Um but I also know that there's there's meat on the bone, man. Yeah. So if I want to make a few bucks, I, I think I, I would still buy a copy because I know I'll still be able to make a few bucks on it. But again, I'm 
I'm not attached to the character. Uh, I'll say, you know what, 60, 40, uh, I'll still spec. Okay. What about you, Rob? What do you, do you feel anyway, which way about this book? I think this is kind of what I talked about earlier. I, I think you could still jump on the ship, but I think the risk level is a little bit higher here that the boat may be a little bit further out from port than you realize. But I do think to newbie's point, I do think there is some meat left on this. Me personally, I would rather take that three grand for a six, five and buy uh, you know, a slightly lower grade giant size X-Men number one. I feel like that's like, if you're going to, you're going to say, here's $3,000, go buy a book with it. This is not the book that I would go buy. But if you're forcing yeah. me to pick spec spec or forget, I would pick spec. All right. Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm 100% spec on, on this one. And, and partly because in the way I had to think about it was that uh, similar to Drew, I have sold, I've had a few copies of this one and I've sold every one and I'm going to sell these two. It's just, I'm not... I'm not tied to the character. And that that does concern me a little bit that it's similar to to some of the, like you said, like Eternals and and uh, and Special Marvel Edition 15. It's that are you going to see a, a huge glut of them hit the yeah. market when when that show comes out? He's a bigger character. I mean, he's not the biggest, but he's definitely bigger than Shang-Chi was. So like you said, are the collectors going to keep the floor up? What do you think, Drew? Yeah, no. I'm going to forget this book in the short term. I'm, I'm looking at the census numbers right now, and about one-fourth of the total population is graded nine or above. So I feel like the money it's going to take to get one of those books, you could easily turn into some major Golden Age book, major Bronze Age book. I don't think that right now putting that kind of money into this book is the smartest play. Um, right. That said, 8085, that's where I'm going to be watching when, like we talked about earlier, the show's over and we've got some shiny new thing over here to look at. And Moon Knight kind of takes his turn at the end of the line for a bit. I'm going to be that guy trying to buy the dip when this Got thing it. comes down, if I can get it for, you know, let me check my numbers here again. If I get to where I can get that book in an eight Oh for 2,500 bucks, I would probably do that. And it wasn't that long ago that an eight Oh was 2,500 bucks. Yes. <laughs> To yeah, it wasn't that long ago. A nine two was twenty five hundred bucks. That's a but that's there, what I sold my nine two for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, there's there's no way. Look, I'll put it this way: there's no way in hell I'm trading one of my one eighty ones for a werewolf by night thirty two. No, yeah, no. All yeah. right, well let's 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 do this because we we're gonna we're gonna lightning round through a few of these yeah. books, so we'll just kind of knock them out again. Another book is gonna get hot right now. Let's just go down and start with newbie again. Morbius is Morbius for real? Is this guy for real or is this guy everyone's flipping this? I, I think the only thing that gets this like credibility is, you know, like Drew, we uh, we woke up Saturday mornings and we watched the cartoon. He was around. It's popular. But I think the fact that the movie keeps getting pushed back and I get why I think people are just like, ah, forget this. Um, this for me is a forget. Hmm. What about you, Rob? You a fan uh, of Jared Leto I, think it, I think it's just I just think that the where we're at in the timeline is too late. Like if yeah. you were going to spec this, you should have spec that already. What about you, Ryan? Yep. For, forget. You can get the, if you want this book as like, you know, like a Spider-Man collector, you'll have much better opportunities in the future yeah. later on in the year. True. Yep. Forget it. Fox has made a 2004 comic book movie. We're in 2022 and I don't <laughs> expect much out of it. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Next book here. She Hulk. Number one. Spec. Or she Hulk. Um, Ruby, what do you think? I, I'm saying spec. Uh, something that we've not really seen, right? Uh, a female lead, uh, green, you know, all that. Uh, we haven't seen it. I think there's going to be a lot of things that come into it, like a daredevil, like a Hulk. Uh, just, you know, I think it's going to be fun. It's going to attract people who aren't collectors. I think it can, it's going to make the book go. Still a lot of meat on the bone. I'm specking. Rob, you a She-Hulk fan here? Uh, not a She-Hulk fan, but I do think there is a little bit of meat left on this one. Um, I'm not sure it's a play that I would make, but I could see the appeal to still spec on this. Mm. Ryan? I, I'd say I'm, I'm halfway between spec and forget because I, I think it's one where 
it's risky. I, I feel yeah. like this is like, one of the is shows. Is this going to fall off the cliff? Like yeah. every yeah, you know, I think this is one of the shows. It's going to be. It gets, may surprise people on the downside, um, and so then you're going to have some pretty big drops in the price of that book. Got it. So if you spec on it, be ready to sell it. Right, Drew. I would say spec on it. Um, there's just there's so many of these books, and there's so many in really nice shape because there was this warehouse find a while back, like many years ago. But there are just so many high grade copies of this book out there. If you are going to go after it, be patient with it. Wait for the right deal. Don't deal. just go in and you know throw money at the first person who has one. I I think if this does hit it'll be okay. You're not going to make a ton of money right now, but if it doesn't and you're genuinely interested in the character, want the book waited out, there's going to be people dumping these like crazy. Got it. Oh, well, speaking of that dumping books, America Chavez newbie, is this for real? Do people (sighs) want this thing? Are people going to flip this? Man, I think this is a forget. Um, Just thinking of the target audience, younger character. I mean, I know the direction they're going with it, but uh, I don't know if this character can hold her own. I think it's going to be one of those characters that needs a supporting cast. So, and it's a pricey book already. I I would forget it. Yeah. Rob, any thoughts on America Chavez? Uh, Forget at the time to spec on this. Once the same thing, it's a timeline problem. This should have been spec'd on a while ago. It's, I think it's, you're jumping on a little too late. High risk. Mm. High risk. Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. We're all, we're all, I think on the same page. Yeah, this. I think, so. I, I think it's one where it, it was a good spec. It's just, it's not anymore. Yeah. It's, it's pretty pricey, especially that variant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if you got it in enough, but this, this will be one that you can safely assume is going to oh, yeah. really drop off after Doctor yeah. Strange. Drew, you feel the same? Yeah. I mean, if, if they can't let Spider-Man run his own movie, there's no way they're going to let America run her own movie. If you could have bought this off a wall raw for 20 bucks a few years ago, you were good. Now, nope. Walk away. Got it. All right. Similarly to that, Jane Foster, Thor. Thor's going to come out. Is this going to be that book kind of like we were saying, Newbie, where they're going to let it, you have it back? Like, uh, are we thinking Natalie Portman's going to be <laughs> Thor I'm here? Little- like, is it, what do you think? I love Natalie Portman. Um, I think this is a forget. I think you'll be able to get it down the road a little bit uh, cheaper. She might be around for a little bit longer than we expect, uh, but definitely forget. Rob? I'm going to lean more towards forget on this one, too. I just hate chasing this modern stuff like this. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be forget for me. Ryan? Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Again, yeah, I mean... (laughs) Even the what if 10, I, I wouldn't be, I no. wouldn't be picking up right now. Drew. Rob is my spirit animal. Yeah. <laughs> it's modern walk away. All yeah. right. Well then, well then can we, can we safely assume? Cause I feel like there was murmurs about this, but like, again, you know, I, I, I want to talk about these books cause you know, there's gonna be people who watch and I want them to be aware of like, Hey, this eternals one scenario can happen. Yep. Um, but Oh, 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 got ahead of myself. Oh, uh, Right here, newbie. We talked about Ms. Marvel, right? You already heard it's, my opinion on this. Yeah, Ryan, you already had this another Martin book, kind of kids show centric. What do you think about this one? Listen, she's uh she's from my I guess somewhat uh town here in the GTA, uh in Canada. She is Canadian. It's gonna she's just too young. Um, I like certain the some of the kids that are coming, so like Sam Alexander, Riri, I like those. Uh, I'm not really digging this one. Uh, this is a forget for me. It's too expensive for something that I, I personally have a good feeling. It's just going to be like slashed in half after uh, the aftermath. Once you get the show. Yeah. yeah. Rob, same yeah. thing. Modern book. Yeah. Same thing. Forget. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, we heard your opinion earlier. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, and Drew, I, I got to assume you're, you're, you're with the, the crowd here. This one just blew up too quick. Um, I, I don't think there was much of a window for it. So I, I would forget it as well. I think some of these younger characters can be hard to relate to for a lot of the audience. Um, and I don't know that that's going to translate very well into yeah. uh, the community. Especially right. that, like the one in 75, like it, it, that, I think that's this yeah. one, the purple cover. That book yeah. is like, like yeah. eight grand <laughs> it's crazy all right last few books here we got you got a little preview earlier tomb of dracula i think blade is gonna show up in a thing this year that's what i think 
Uh, but what do you think, newbie? Is Blade for real? Like, is Blade the, you know, Shang-Chi going to, we're going to flip him? Or is he a real fan's character? Everyone's going to be obsessed. I would spec on this before it's too late. Even the low, low grades of this, I would probably try to get. You're seeing an influx on people buying Blade 1. Me, I got that. It's back there somewhere. I think Blade is a character you don't want to miss on. If Shang-Chi was successful, the vampire killer, you know, the nostalgia of everything that he had. Yeah, th this is uh, still meat on the bones. Go get it. What about you, Rob? Are you a Wesley Snipes fan from back in the day? Are you I love that movie. <laughs> the first one is so good. Um, I would spec on this just because this is, I mean, once again, you know, this is a more classic book. If this blows up in your face, you're, I think you're still okay holding this long term and, and you might still be okay. You, right. Maybe you don't make a huge profit on it, but maybe you don't lose your ass on it like you could some of this modern stuff. Yeah. Right. Ryan, I heard you talking about picking up Blade, so I'm assuming maybe spec for you. Well, well for I would actually I would I would put Blade even in the in the collect category um, because uh, well, and I I have I have my family has a, a long tie to to Blade because we uh, are you're we, a vampire at, Chris, at Christmas uh, we went and my my brothers and I we were going to go see Blade two this is whenever that came out like a long time ago and uh, I remember my. My stepmom and my dad, they're, they're like, oh, this will be a fun family movie. Let's go. And so we all went together and then when the, the vampire's face opened up and started eating people and stuff. It was it was. And so for like the next like number of years, it was just a joke that somebody gave Blade 2 as a gift uh, to, to different family members throughout the year. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Blade. I think it's I think it's a fun, a fun book. I would. I, I saw someone comment that they think it's a little late to spec. It's probably a little late, but I would still think it's a decent collect. If you can find it at, you know, maybe a little below fair market value, something like that. I think it's still well worth picking up. Yeah. Drew. I am actively specting on this. I've got a, a few of them right now that I'm just sitting on. Um, I think this is a good buy in low grade. Um, just, when this character hits, I have absolute faith that Blade's going to be a hit in the MCU. Um, you know, if, if you could get three movies on your own before anybody knew anything about comic book movies, you're going to be successful in an established universe. But if you don't have the, the money to, to chase this one, 13 is a great alternative. Yeah, so, definitely. so lean in on Blade, everybody. All right. All right. Last couple here, newbie, Avengers forty eight. Oh, Ryan! Don't be, Ryan be biased. Don't be biased. <laughs> Kit Harrington playing. Is this character for real? Is this character Let's, for real, or is this the flip like Eternals? Uh, I think this character is for real, and here's why: we got him throughout this whole movie, and he did not do anything. Black Knight. It was at the end. Yeah. And for those reasons. You know he signed on for a few more projects. He is a big name. He's going to be big. This book is going to explode once he's in a costume or fighting somebody. Mm -hmm. I bought my 7.0 for 600 bucks Canadian. I mean, 7.0s now are like 1200 1300 I'm holding. Uh, I could sell, but I'm holding because I know that it's just going to be better. Um, yeah, I, I think it's spec for sure. Do you think it, but like, does this run the Shang-Chi risk? Of like when we get them and then it just tanks or uh, no you... because well I, I yes yeah yeah okay it's okay. not an a no, it's just good right? it's just good to, but it's good to clarify i mean it's good yeah. to clarify i mean yeah you, you're gonna spec if you can sell but yeah what, what about you rob what do you think about this Any uh, thoughts it, on it, black knight it's spec for sure i mean you get kit harrington with a sword in his hand that alone is enough to drive a market like mm -hmm. i mean just based off the game of thrones nostalgia play yeah Ryan, you you love this book. This is you're you're selling all your golden age stuff to get nine point eights of this. Uh, yeah, no, this this one uh, it, I feel similar to this as I as I do about uh, Avengers Eight with with Kang. You know, it's like it's a character that most people didn't really care about before, and you, you know you see prices spike with it, and they're not going to care about when he's gone. I mean, yeah, it, I'd say it's a book that you can one hundred percent buy and sell over the next. X number of years as they have properties with him and all that kind of stuff and ride whatever wave that is that, you know, that you see with these dips and peaks. Um, but, but not a, uh, so, so I'd say spec, but not a, a collect. And I, 
I wouldn't forget it because it's down quite a bit right now. You could yeah, definitely pick has. up copies right now and you could, I'm sure if he has, like they, they've been saying, he's going to have his own, you know, movie or something like that. I mean, you'll see price increases again with this one. Drew? I, I agree with what Ryan said. Uh, short term, next couple of years, I think there's money to be made there. I don't like it long term. I would take that money in to put it into a more established character. Because um, as soon as that contract is up, this book's going to fall away. And if you really just want to see Kit Harrington swing a sword and ride a, a black horse, watch Game of Thrones. It's, right. it's a hot potato situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the last book here, and based on your guys' answers, I feel like I know what you guys are going to say here. But we got to talk about, oh, the ne next couple books right here. So we got to talk about Yay. this one right here. This is Shuri. Maybe Shuri's going to be the next Black, pa Black Panther, her first appearance. Newbie. Pass. Uh, Shuri, pass. One word. Okay. Pass. <laughs> uh, Rob, are you a fan of Letitia Wright taking over Black Panther later in the year? I mean, I think it's going to be a cool movie. I, I think it could be interesting, but I'm going to forget on this one. I would rather so because I literally just bought one. Uh, speaking of like looking at things that other people aren't, everyone's looking at Spider-Man and X-Men. I just bought an FF52 not that long ago, like as in a couple weeks ago. Oh, mm -hmm, I want because mm -hmm. uh, everyone's looking at everything else. No one's talking about that. And yeah, we may not get a proper Black Panther portrayal again in an MCU movie, but that's still a blue chip key in my mind that has come yep. down quite a bit. Yeah, like yep. I got a, I got a six, five white pages back there. I just got it in the mail literally three days ago. It's a great like, book. I, I would for the purposes of this. Yeah. Forget on this, even though I do think it could be an interesting movie. And I did like that character in the first black Panther movie. But once again, you know, for me, comic books are not a modern play. I have that itch in sports cards. You know, I, I, I come yeah. to this side more for safety and security. Right. Ryan. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm similar in the moderns, you know, I, it's not necessarily something I would, I would buy now. Did they, have they replaced the actress? I just, I don't know what's going on. Recently. She's, she got hurt pretty bad on set. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well she got hurt, but then because she's against she back to get vaccinated, she that, can't yeah. actually come back and film. She so, got, uh, she got canceled. But as far as I know, like, I think, I think she's still it, but let's assume that she's still going to, because that that's my big fear with this is that, mm -hmm. that they basically write her out, you right. know, and, that, and I think that is a, it's either a very real possibility or you, you, they're going to be, or they're going to have to recast. And uh, so it, it, I think it's a very risky book Got at this it. moment. Drew. Yeah. There's a lot of volatility um, just with that whole situation. You know, we're going to have Killmonger back and he take over. Is she going to be replaced? There's just a lot of question marks on this one. I think if you're digging and find it, you know, underpriced where, or like priced a couple of years ago, somewhere between three to $10, I think you're safe to pick it up, but if you're looking at paying market value as it stands right now, I'd forget it. Got it. Okay. And now the real last book, I think again, you guys, modern books going to give similar answers here, but newbie, let's hear this from you. Obviously the next Iron Man, you're going to be a fan of Ruby Williams. Like what, what's your, what's your thought on this book? Like, is this, oh. is this going to be the next UF ultimate fallout four? No, no, because the next day of 15. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I think this is, I mean, as much as it's got uh meat on the bone, I just don't think it's gonna. And this is coming from an Iron Man fan, okay? So this hurts me to say, I just don't yeah. think it's gonna resonate properly. I do like Riri. Um, I have a lot of the you know, one in 25, one in 50s that are really hard to get. Um, you know, that I'm, I'm waiting for her to come, but. Unfortunately, I just don't think like the aftermath is going to go very well. So if you really want this book, I think you can get it later. Well, um, well, let, let me ask you this, though. To that point, she's coming out. She's going to be in Black Panther, too, later in this yeah. year. And then she's going to have her own show the yeah. next year after. You selling in Black Panther or are you going to wait till? I show? think uh, a lot of people are going to just jump on it, depending on what happens in Black Panther. Right. Like if she I, I think she's going to have like a really great scene similar to like uh yelena and kate bishop in uh hawkeye like i think they're gonna have a relationship like that a little bit of comedy maybe and it's gonna get people like jumping on it and then i think ironheart it might i mean i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna love it i just think that you might be able to get this cheaper down the road and if it's just a year you have to wait you know why not save that money i think uh nine eights go for three grand somewhere around there maybe two something like that canadian 
Yeah, I don't um, know off the top of my head, but yeah. So, you know, uh, for those reasons, you know, like uh, like Rob said, I'd, I'd rather put that money right now in a lower grade like uh, Giant Size X-Men. Yeah. Rob, you th- doing the same move here with the moderns? Yeah, I'm typically pretty anti-modern, and, and that would be my general stance with that. That being said, I do think there's an interesting case that if this character actually truly hits – there's a situation where we're looking back and being like, oh man, we were all so stupid for saying, you know what I mean? Like if this actually really hits and goes next level, I can see it being a pretty good book, but you're running the risk of audience reception. Do they handle her correctly? You know, yeah. a whole bunch right. of X factors that we have no control over. Right. So that would be my only lean for not wanting the spec on this. So I would lean towards forget. And also I don't like that the cost of entry is so high. Yeah. You know, right. w- w- given where the price points already at to me, that's the scariest part. Uh, Because like Newbie said, you could just take that money and you can put that in the way better, safer things, in my opinion. I mean, I would rather, for the same price, I would rather just buy an Ultimate Fallout 4 if you wanted a spec on Modern. Yeah. Right. Ryan? Yeah, I mean, for me personally, if it's not a book I'm personally going to buy, I'm not going to recommend somebody else to to buy it. And and it's it's not something I'm personally going to to pick up. I I could see potential with it, but yeah, it's, it's expensive. And with Moderns, I... I like to go for nine eights. I, I don't think I know you can get like, we, we kind of, we didn't talk about that too much on that nine, eight slide. I know nine sixes, you know, nine fours, that kind of thing. Like they will often move similar percentages to the nine eight. So they are, yes. they are options. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Often the trouble, the only like little bit of trouble with it is that I think the demand is much higher for the nine eight. So you may have yeah. a little more trouble selling it. That's the only real downside there. Right. Um, but so, yeah, maybe if, if you really want it, you know, maybe try for a lower grade just so then you're not, risking maybe quite as much money on yeah. it because yeah i mean this one and, and the variant are, are i think because this is the one that has that it's that like bluish type variant with the red mm-hmm. yeah, that's like, like an i think that's so like an expensive. eight thousand dollar book in a nine eight canadian yeah you and your, your canadian Jesus. money yeah. yeah sorry guys that, that's the only way i know it guys i'm sorry what is that like a 350 bucks <laughs> <laughs> True. So what about you? It's rounded out. Are um, you thinking that this book after Black Panther crashes or whatever you want to say falls off the cliff? Or do you think the floor holds until you get Riri Williams' 2023 show? I say forget this because this is a book people have stacked, like piles mm. of the A cover, piles of the variant. Um, it got so hot so quick. It was right one of those main books that came out right as speculation on new releases really just went crazy. Um, however many years ago that was, I don't know. I'm old time blurs together. Um, I, th- I think once she shows up wherever she shows up first, black Panther I, uh, two, I guess the market is just going to be swimming with these things. So if it's a book you want, do what Ryan said, pick up, you know, a nine Oh eight, five, something like that, just to check the box. But this thing is going to be everywhere. Yeah. All right. And with that, we're going to skip over this and just go to our final thoughts here. I've taken so much of your guys' time. Thank you so much for joining this stream. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm sure the chat has really enjoyed this. I had the front row seat to some of the best minds and comic books, <laughs> but I, just want to leave you guys with this last question here. Final thoughts, bullish or bearish on the market for 2022? 2021 was to the moon. Are we going to see the market hit those record prices again in April just due to the rate of inflation, even if that's the what's going to happen? Or what's your strategy going in this year? Are you going to just not buy anything again? Or are you feeling like, the prices are going to continue to go up. We'll just throw it out to the floor here. Um, what's that saying? Uh, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. Well, you shame. can't get you, you can't get you fooled get twice. Fooled yeah, you can't, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want somebody to like take that saying and be like, does he know what the saying is? No, no. no. <laughs> um, you know what? No, you know, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Um, you know, we've heard it since probably September. People being like, oh, I'm not buying this, and I'm not. No, I'm gonna do it. So. You know, clean, you know, clean slate, you know, it's January. Be cautious of what you, you know, buy, I guess. Uh, we're still in a pandemic uh, unless you're in like Florida, I guess. Because, um, yeah. Um, and other than that, I mean, I, I would be cautious on what I buy. Uh, there's a lot of 
modern stuff and a lot of shows coming out, you know, playing ahead. Me personally, I'm going, and Ryan knows this, I am going after certain grails this year. Um, I've just had enough of like saying later, I'll get it later, I'll get it later. Um, because I've looked the last year and a half and later has just piled up on money. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going after like really the, the key books that I really want, the, the PC in the coffin kind of books. Yeah. What about you, Rob? I, I don't know where the sports card market is right now, but would you expect numbers to be hitting what the sports card market was or is similar for comic books? What's your thoughts on this? I mean, I don't I don't think we're ever going to see the all time. high. I mean, not ever, but like a lot of stuff is not going to get back to the all time highs that they were at in you know the spring and early summer. But I don't know that they necessarily have to for the market to do extremely well. You know, it had its peak. It had its pullback. And now it's back to whatever its new normal is. Um, I, I mean, I'll speak for myself. I've been spending a ton buying what I consider blue chip bronze and silver age keys yep. as much as I could get my hands on them. Um, you know, in the last two months, I have bought a 181, a giant size X-Men one, a, a FF 52, uh, an ASM 194. You know, I'm, I'm that this, the, the true, like good first appearances. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about, I would like yeah. to get an X-Men one. That's like my ultimate grail. Uh, prior to that, it was Giant Size X Men One and Hulk One Eighty One. Uh, I knocked both those off at the tail end of this past year because, like we talked about earlier, that stuff had its pullback, and I feel like stuff at that level has re-leveled out at its new floor. My big focus is basically X Men stuff. I think if you're thinking more long term, we all know that they're coming, uh, and if people freaked out for the Avengers, I mean, I think a lot of people forgot that the X Men were the Golden Boys of Marvel for a long, long time. Yep. And there's a lot of people that have strong ties to that stuff. And if they do it correctly, the that X-Men stuff is going to fly. Like, it's just going to fly. And, yeah. you know, maybe it goes up and down between now and then, but I still believe long-term in a lot of that stuff. Ryan? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think it, like I mentioned a little bit before, I think it becomes much more targeted on on what books are going to see, see spikes. I, I think You'll still you'll continue to see some pullbacks in uh, in the the books that are either non keys or, or not as uh, uh, I'll say important or whatever for, right now. Uh, but you'll you'll I think you'll see some new highs. I mean I, I see new highs every week when I'm pricing when right. I'm pricing books in, in the heritage auction. I, I do see new highs on books every single week, um, but it is much more focused. You don't have it, I mean earlier in twenty one. Uh, I was seeing new highs on like 50 to 60% of the sales. You know, now it's down to seeing new highs on about 20% of the sales. So uh, I don't know what the, what the normal is, you know, but it seems like that's a little more normal on, on what we see. It's a kind of like a 10 to 20% of books having new highs on, on the weekly basis. And, and most books either selling, you know, around where they were or, or, uh, or lower. And so, yeah, I, I, I think, I think we're getting a little bit more back to a, to a normal. Uh, I wouldn't expect another, I mean, but I mean, who knows? I mean, nobody saw yeah. the last year's coming, you know, it's always possible, right. but I don't really expect another crazy spike because at some point books, they're just, they're too expensive for anybody to afford. Yeah. Right. And Drew, final uh, thoughts. I am bullish on the bearishness that will take over the market. Um, in other words, as more people get priced out, um, economic situation tightens people need money um i i think there's going to be a, a large amount of collections that come up for sale so i'm going to be ready to buy those mm. um just because well that's what i do um but i think selectively there will be books that continue to get hot um, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to buy large collections um small collections as people step away because 2021 took a lot of the fun out of it for some people and any indication that that's going to continue into 2022 when there's not as much fundage available to to go into the hobby is just going to cause people to drop out right. sad but true um personally i'm all in on tmnt number one that's that's where i'm at Get those turtle books before the cinematic turtle universe happens. Yeah. Your word of advice. Well, guys, 
I've taken a lot of your time. We went for a crazy amount of time. Wow. I had no idea how long this was going to go. Thank you so much to everybody in the chat for, for hanging with us. Uh, you guys were awesome. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to all of you guys, Neo, uh, Cards and Comics, Rob, uh, Como, Matt, who obviously dipped out earlier from the Pressable Defects, Newbie, and Ryan at Automatic Comics. If you guys are in the chat and you haven't checked out their channels or subbed them up, please do so because you're going to get incredible information and incredible, you know, the work that they put in. Uh, I learn from all of them all the time. So definitely, definitely go check them out. Uh, but with that, I think that'll be the end of the stream. I mean, newbie, why don't you let the people know where they can find you if you want to shout out your Instagram or something like that. Yeah, man. Uh, first off, uh, thanks for having me, man. Uh, this is like, I think my second or third time on with you. So I uh, appreciate it. Uh, the chat. Thanks for the, the, the questions, the comments, everything. Just so you guys know, I did see a few questions. I do love Florida, by the way. It was, it was just a joke because somebody in here, uh, <laughs> But yeah, I, I do love Florida. Um, I love the States. Uh, you know, uh, Rob, Drew, nice meeting you guys. Uh, hopefully, you know, talk soon. Maybe be on a show together again. Ryan, I mean, I'll probably talk to you tomorrow. And, you know, we're on a show together in like two weeks. Uh, but yeah, Instagram, Newbie Comics, Halls, uh, Investments, Specs, Movies, uh, A Good Time. Uh, you know, Sundays and Tuesdays, 9.35 p.m. Eastern Time come hang low like matt said you know on for his channel i mean it it could be for you it couldn't it, it may be not for you so you know come um but yeah it's a good time good laughs comics and uh yeah uh neo uh neo cards and comics pretty much everywhere twitter ig youtube those are my three uh primary things most of my content uh probably 80 percent of my content is sports card related with a toss in of I'm big into Marvel cards and big into comic books as well. So that gets tossed in. Uh, typically my comic book takes usually be a little bit more outside the box. So I may have an interesting angle on some of that stuff. That's not uh, the same stuff just because I'm looking at it from different angles. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's where you can find me on pretty much everything. Nearly daily content, uh, give or take occasional live stream here and there, occasional guests here and there, but uh, you know, Thanks, Swaggle, for having me on the channel. The first time I've been on with you, but we've talked a lot uh, occasionally in DMs. And yeah. it was nice hanging out with my fellow panelists that I haven't had a chance to meet before on the comic book side of things. Yeah. And Drew? Yeah, it's great to meet everybody. I think this is the first time um, really interacting in person, especially with everybody other than uh, Mickey. But I just want to take a second to say, how sweet is that sign back there, guys? Oh, dude, look at this <laughs> sign. Look at this thing. is amazing. Anybody notice that? Uh, <laughs> I've been can... staring at it the whole time. <laughs> look you at this. Can... What do you got? Uh, wait. Oh, hey. Performance anxiety. Oh, God. No. Oh, no. no. I swear, this never happens. The battery does. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. Nice. <laughs> nice. No. Uh, you can find me at. Uh, Como comic books. Sometimes there's periods in between the words. Sometimes there's not. I'm on Instagram. I'm trying to do better there. Um, I'm also, of course, on my YouTube channel, getting back into the swing of putting out more content on a more regular basis. Um, tomorrow's video is going to be delayed because we were here tonight. So sorry, everybody. Okay. Coming soon to whatnot. <laughs> um, if you're in the Midwest, I set up at a lot of shows around Kansas City and St. Louis. Stop by and say hi. And uh, chances are you'll probably see me around here some more, too. So I think I've done more shows with uh, Swagglehoss than anybody else out there in, in the YouTube. So absolutely happy to be back. And uh, last words, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me on here. This was a lot of fun. Uh, just talking about this, everybody. If I'm on Instagram, I'm on YouTube under the same name. Uh, and generally, my a lot of my stuff is... Uh, I do a lot of market watching, you know, with the, the weekly heritage comic auction. And if you, if you like to see some kind of some, maybe some less common books, uh, I have uh, a lot of unboxings that tend to have go into the golden age and uh, silver age and golden age are, are a lot of what I, what I like to buy and, and what I, what I like to show. So uh, some, maybe some different stuff that maybe you don't get to see all the time on, on other channels. All right. And with that, we want to say good night to everybody in the chat. Thank you all so much for joining and we will see you in the next stream.